ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by McDonald's. Shots of the Bethune Cookman locker room getting ready for a big conference tilt against the Hampton Pirates. Both teams in contention to win the MEAC Conference crown. Just a few moments ago, lightning striking the area here in Daytona Beach. We've got a lightning delay. Hopefully, we'll get to some action in just a few, but it has been raining for much of the day. And Unfortunately, lightning striking, and that's why you see nobody in attendance right now. With that, we say hello and welcome. Mike Morgan alongside former NFL quarterback Jay Walker. And, yes, we've got a lot of great matchups coming up for you the rest of the season. And, yes, it is early in the season. But, Jay, make no mistake about it. This game is very big for both teams. And I think both coaches tried to downplay the importance of this football contest. For Bethune-Cookman, this is must-win on their home field. They lost to South Carolina State in their last football contest with two losses in conference play. The very difficult to advance to postseason play. And for Hampton, if they can win this game tonight, they control their own destiny for the rest of the year. They do not play South Carolina State this season. They would have a very good opportunity in advancing the postseason playoffs if they win tonight. Kind of a heavyweight battle. Both teams score a lot of points. And speaking of boxing, Jay, give us the tail of the tape. Well, this is going to be a heavyweight MEAC fight. So what you're going to see here is Hampton's got a very good offense. They're high tempo, but Bethune's got the more explosive offense. They score a lot of points. Both defenses are excellent. And when it comes down to special teams, I'm going to give the edge to the Pirates from Hampton. They've got tremendous special teams. We are now receiving word that we are officially under a 30-minute delay, 30 minutes away from the kickoff between both these teams. And, again, both very much uh, in the hunt for the conference crown. The Hampton Pirates have lost the last three against Bethune-Cookman, so it should be a great matchup. Let's head it back now to our ESPNU studios. Rich is standing by. Rich, take it away. Thanks, Mike, and we will get you back. And for us, that's called family. You guys are well prepared. Like I told you, trained behavior becomes instinct. And you have trained yourself to the highest. So get out there today and make it happen. And we got to do it as a family. That's just the bottom line. There is no other way. You guys know, if they run, you chase them. If they jump, you pull them down. If they hide, you dig them up. But you go find them, you go hunt. And you hunt as a family. 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 family! 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 I told you it's the greatest thing that God ever made next to himself. Family! 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 Hunt as a family. Hunt as one. Go and achieve victory as a family! 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 We always work to what? Win. Always train to what? Win. Let's go. Let's go. You are watching ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by McDonald's. Daytona Beach Municipal Stadium, the site of a MEAC showdown between the Hampton Pirates and the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us. Mike Morgan alongside former NFL quarterback Jay Walker. The weather has cleared out. We're ready for some football. We know you are as well. A MEAC showdown between two of the premier programs in the league. Jay, we know there's a lot of big games coming up throughout the year. It's still early, but make no question about it. There's a lot on the line tonight. And as much as the coach has tried to downplay this football contest, everybody knows there's a lot right, an opportunity to play in postseason football, which is what the season's all about. Hampton controls their own destiny. If they can beat Bethune-Cookman because they don't play South South Carolina State. Bethune Cookman, on the other hand, lost to South Carolina State last time on this field. If they lose tonight's contest, it'll be very difficult for them to advance to postseason play. Well, we are near one of the most famous race racetracks in all of the world, so it's only fitting that we'd have two high octane offenses tonight, led by the rapid attack, a quick strike attack by the Hampton Pirates. Yeah, and Hampton comes in here. They're bringing a top fuel type of offense into a city that's known for the round track raceways. And with Hampton, their offense is predicated on three things speed speed and more speed they don't slow down they hurry up to the line of scrimmage getting in and out of the huddle trying to tire their opponents and they're led by the Syracuse transfer the two-time MIAC player of the week quarterback David Legree. Meanwhile, the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman, they're not the first of the line of scrimmage, but they are most often at the finish line. They lead the MEAC in scoring over 40 points a game. And I think we are in Daytona. They are built <laughs> like a NASCAR type of car. They can stop. They can break. They can get in and out of the huddles. They can play with speed when they need to. They can apply the pressure. They've got so many different ways to beat you. 
Last season, they averaged over 42 points per game. This year, they're averaging over 40 points per game. This is an offense that's just explosive, and they've got speed to burn. And the guy driving the car for them is University of Maryland transfer quarterback Jamal Robinson, averaging 248 yards in the air. Coach Don Rose of the Hampton Pirates in his third year getting ready for a big matchup. The Hampton program has dropped the last three to Bethune-Cookman. A big game, no question for his program. A statement game, if you will. He would love to make a statement tonight and have the inside track along with South Carolina State for the MEAC crown. Again, those two teams not meeting one another this season, so it makes it even more important to take care of business tonight. A tough one on the road. And Coach Rose got a signature win last time we saw him on ESPNU in that victory over his mentor, Joe Taylor, at, Ham uh, at Florida A&M. Winning that game really let them think that they can win the MEAC title. There you see Coach Brian Jenkins. Uh, Bethune Cookman and what a terrific job he's done in a short amount of time. He won the MEAC championship last season in his first year. He started off the season 10 and 0 and they wound up losing in the first round of the playoffs against New Hampshire. The coin toss won by Hampton. They have elected to receive and we'll get this underway again a lightning delay early on but we're ready to go here from Daytona Beach. Kickoff will be fielded from the 14 yard line. Good alley along the left side, past the 35, and shoved out of bounds near the 45 is Reginald Dixon. A good field position for the Pirates as we get things started on offense. A 44 yard return. David Legree, 65% completion percentage, four touchdowns and two interceptions. He has been terrific in the early going of this season. He is the reigning MEAC Offensive Player of the Week. He's already won that award twice. The lone back is McLeod. On first down, Legree, Coxon fires, and it falls incomplete, setting up a second and ten intended for McClure. Impact players tonight, well, Antoine Chisholm, he was the MEAC Rookie of the Year last season and certainly one of the top backs around, Jay. Yeah, he's a multi-purpose back. Doesn't have a huge frame, so he's not the type of guy that's going to hurt you running in between the two tackles often, but when they get him the ball in open space, he's difficult to bring down. Second and ten, and that time McLeod is devoured great penetration by the Bethune Cookman defense Ryan Lewis impact player preseason second team and All-American last year they have a number of standout players on this defense two words grown man Ryan Lewis is a grown man he makes it look as if he's a man playing against boys very active one of the best linebackers in all of SCS football and already a penalty flag That is our referee Shannon Easton. She hails from the state of Arizona. Both coaches hope they don't hear Shannon's voice too often. Penalties have plagued each squad, particularly Bethune Cookman, averaging over 10 penalties a game. Sets up a third down and 17. Out of the gun, Legree under hot pursuit. Dancing and finally tripped up at the 30. A big loss on the play. Great pursuit by Jarkivas Fields, a sophomore out of Sanford, Florida, a loss of five. Well, one thing that Bethune Cook was going to do is bring pressure, and they're going to get there in bunches. They like to get Ryan Davis there in number 49 around the edge. He's a great speed rusher. Unfortunately for them, he was down on that play, slow to get up. The one thing they really apply is pressure, pressure, and a lot of pressure. Their defensive coordinator, Yogi Jones, is one of the best defensive college football. And he's going to find a way to hit the quarterback. Fields, a part of that great linebacking core, could be the best in Bethune-Cookman history. Lewis, Sandilands, and Fields, outstanding. Patrick Harris back to receive the punt, and calls for a fair catch at the 25. Now the Wildcats will bring the offense onto the field, led by the quarterback, Jamar Robinson, the transfer from the University of Maryland. Robinson, a terrific week one victory over Prairie View. Really played a near-perfect game last week, struggled a bit, four interceptions. And I think for him, when you talk to the coaching staff, he needed that learning curve. Thinking you're going to make it through conference play as easily as you did that non-conference battle just wasn't realistic. This is a team that doesn't turn the football over. But Boone Cookman led the nation 
in turnover margin last year. He turned it over four times himself, and this is an offense that only turned it over six times all last season. Robinson with two backs behind him on play action. Nice little swing pass to the right. And caught by Levette for a gain of five. Our impact players, Jay, Eddie Poole, one of the best wideouts we'll see. Yeah, he's a transfer from Rutgers. And he's got that deep play potential. He's got the touchdown for the year. He averages over 10 yards per carry with great size. And on the other side, Michael Pellerin. He's just quite simply their lockdown cornerback. He's got NFL scouts here to watch his performance tonight. If you like the passing game, you'll love both these offenses. They will throw early and often. On second and five, big hole left side. And some nice jitterbug moves near the 35-yard line by Levette, the redshirt junior out of Gainesville, Florida. Give him six yards and a first down. Yeah, good job on the left side of the offensive line for the Phil Cookman getting the seal block. And you see the big tackle there, Jackie Hoffman, number 77, getting up on that second level, getting up underneath the linebacker, establishing a nice clear running lane for the running back. They fake the end around and a couple yards on the dive. Give them maybe four for Jamar Robinson. Both these teams like to work in a hurry. We might see about 150 plays tonight. I, I believe so. That's the case. And, you know, what I think gets lost is both these teams have great defensive units as well. So it's going to be a matter of which defense is going to be able to enforce their will against the opposing offense. Takes a shot. That's a free ball. He's got to catch it. He does. And gets wrestled down at about the 43-yard line. That's Anthony Jordan, the running back, making the catch. Robert Copeland with a big stick on the play on the quarterback. We talked about the fact that both these teams like to bring pressure. You got a guy coming around the end unprotected. Robert Copeland lays a good little thud on Jamal Robinson. You don't want your quarterback taking too many licks like that. So third down and three. Let's see what Bethune Cookman dials up here. Out of the shotgun, four wides. Robinson keeps it himself, has daylight up the middle, and that'll be a first down. Jamar Robinson, he can beat you in both ways, throwing the football and running there for 11 yards. He's just going to read, make his read on the middle. They follow the running back. He keeps the ball, makes the first lineman whist. That's the second time that Copeland's gotten into the backfield unblocked and has not been able to bring Robinson down with the football. Ball now at the Hampton 45 on first down. Back to the ground game. Had a nice job of pursuit the right side of that defensive line for Hampton. Again, it was Lovett on the carry and a host of white jerseys on the stop. Last year, Hampton had three players that went on to go to the NFL, including Kenrick Ellis, who was a high draft pick of the Jets. So they don't have the dominating salty defense they had a year ago. Take a look how Bethune is really trying to spread out this Hampton Pirate defense. Hampton's not budging. They're playing man-to-man -man coverage. Look for some pressure to come. On second and long. Hand off up the middle, Jackson. And Jackson has about five. It'll set up a third down and five. You know, if you're going to bring pressure, you've got to have the ability to play that man-to-man -man coverage. And for Hampton, it all starts with Micah Pellerin, six feet, two inches tall, 195 pounds, can run. They would call him an NFL caliber corner or safety, and you can see why. When you've got that type of frame and you can cover wide receivers, then you've got NFL talent. Big play here for the Hampton defense. Showing blitz on the rushing four. There's a pass caught and a first down for Eddie Poole, the senior who came from Rutgers, kid out of Belle Glade, Florida. You know, one on one coverage, find your best matchup. And for Bethune Cookman, that means find a way to get the ball to Eddie Poole. Does a good job on the slant route, getting separation from the defensive back and making the catch to pick up the first down. Poole second in the MEAC with 12 receptions already on the year. The drive continues, first and 10 from the 25, and movement on the line. Yeah. 
Probably going to go against the offense. We'll see here as they huddle up. We do have instant replay tonight. You know, one of the things that you talked about earlier, both teams come in here highly penalized. Each team averages over 100 yards in penalties per game. Whichever team can cut that down tonight right. has the best chance of winning. Offside, defense, number 94. Five-yard penalty, first down. And that's Darielle Walker, the guilty party for Hampton, so give them five yards. Let's take a look at our Verizon red zone numbers for Bethune. Cookman, 11 drives, eight touchdowns, and zero field goals. Trying to run wide as Jackson. Jackson takes a licking inside the 10 and knocked out of bounds after a 12-yard pickup. That'll be another first down. This is a great individual effort here by the running back. They're going to bring the guard around to seal the corner. He doesn't do it. He gives up the outside leverage, but what a great job of running by Isidore Jackson using the stiff arm to help get to the outside where the play was designed to go and picking up another Wildcat first down. First and goal, the drive continues methodically moving down the field. Back to the ground game, Robinson going to keep it. Robinson going for the corner and he'll score. Touchdown, Wildcats. What a drive for Bethune Cookman. A great block by Eddie Poole on the perimeter. Poole did a good job of looking at the tight end, Jordan Murphy on your right. He's going to look for somebody to find right there. Once he gets that seal block there on the inside, then you see the block by Eddie Poole on the outside. Great downfield blocking by the tight end and the wide receiver. Heard on for the extra point. It is good, and a 10-play drive gets the Wildcats into the end zone. 7 to nothing. our score here in the first quarter. Jamar Robinson finds pay dirt. ESPN News College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by CenturyLink. Consistently fast speeds and honest personal service. Find out more at CenturyLink.com. With Jay Walker, I'm Mike Morgan here from Daytona Beach. As we look at the tail of the tape, Hampton and Bethune, Cookman, Jay, break it down for us. Well, I think when you've got a heavyweight matchup like this, it's going to come down to some intra, you know, some intricacies. And I think offensively, Bethune is a little bit more explosive in terms of putting points. Both defenses are fantastic. And I'm going to give the edge in special teams to Hampton University. So I think we got a, the makings for a great matchup. And whichever team can maybe get that third check in their column, that's going to be the team that's going to walk away with the W. Bethune Cookman with a very impressive 10 play drive which started at its 25 yard line. Dixon back to return from the 13. Weaving his way through traffic. He's fast. Past the 35, across the 45 and down at the 48 yard line. Let's send it to Charlotte. Rich standing by for an update. Rich. First Mike. All right, thank you very much Rich. We'll keep you posted. Uh, the events going on in that ball game throughout the night. If you're just joining us here, this game delayed about 45 minutes or so due to lightning. Everything is cleared out. We should be good the rest of the way. MEAC showdown between Hampton and Bethune Cookman. David Legree, the quarterback, out of the gun. Hands it off to Chisholm, and Chisholm is swallowed up. A loss on the play of two. Reggie Sandilands, a very talented senior linebacker out of Miami with another stop. You know, we'll talk about Ryan Lewis a lot, but what you'll see, which goes unnoticed, is the play of Reggie Sandilands right here on the right side of your screen. You see the angle pursuit he took. He forced the running back to cut back upfield in the tackle for loss. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. They don't waste any time as that pass falls incomplete intended for Chisholm. You know, one of the one of the knocks on Legree, and I think he's had a fantastic senior season. He's throwing 64 percent, but very often you see him miss the wide open wide receiver. Twice in this game we've seen guys wide open, and it just hasn't been an accurate throw. But he brings physical attributes to the table with the ability to throw the ball vertically. Now on third and 12, Legree, no time, and he goes down. A penalty flag on the play. And unless it's on Bethune Cookman, it's going to be a big loss. Ryan Davis on the sack, a loss of eight. Davis, another preseason all MEAC performer on that heralded defense. Holding. Offense, number 78. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. 
So Hampton will have to punt it away. Ryan Davis plays that defensive end position. He's just going to fly right around Ronald Rose on the left side of your screen. He put the speed on. Rose held him and still couldn't stop Davis from getting to the quarterback. The lefty punts it away. Harris back to receive and calls for a fair catch at the 20. 7-0 our score here from Daytona. So you're two Morgan and Jay Walker. Seven nothing our score here in Daytona Bethune Cookman with an impressive drive to take the lead seven to nothing they've got it back but while we were away a personal foul penalty will back them up half the distance and Jay we talked about it at the top penalties a big issue for this Bethune Cookman team and, and both teams are trying to work on it aggressively but they just basically got to tell the guys play between the whistles they're both physically dominating no need to get all these unnecessary penalties Hampton averages 105 penalty yards per game not to be outdone by Bethune Cookman who averages 116 penalty yards a game and that could very well decide the difference in who wins or who loses this game both these teams Rather evenly matched as you saw Jay's tail of the tape could come down to a special teams play could come down to a miss down to a mistake. You know, I think the surprising thing is for Brian Jenkins the head coach of Bethune Cookman to be the disciplinarian that he is that his team will go out there and make those type of penalties personal foul penalties and those types of things. And I know that they're actively trying to correct those. Jackson the lone back on first down and 10. Take a look at Jackson Murphy right here. He does a good job of being the lead blocker in the running game. Give goes to Jackson. Dances around and is finally gang tackled near the 11. Delbert Tyler, the first one to meet him, the sophomore out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Give him two yards. This is that type of time of the game where you start to figure out the opponent, what they're trying to do, and the defensive coordinator start to make some adjustments. Bethune marched down the field rather easily that last drive controlling the front four for Hampton. So what does Hampton do? They come out and add another man to the box. And now they've got a five man defensive line instead of just four. Again to the ground game and again Hampton is there to, to sniff it out. Gerald Francois the senior out of Fort Lauderdale on the stop. Good job by the adjustment there. They're going to crowd the line of scrimmage and force Jamar Robinson the Bethune quarterback to beat him with his arms rather than let him continue to run all over the place. Now Bethune counteracts, spreads out this pirate defense. It's a big play for the Hampton defense. On third and seven, Robinson pressure from the backside. Rumble. Ball is loose and still on the ground and I believe Copeland knocked it loose and there's a scrum inside the five. It's anybody's guess. Hampton says they've got it. They had white jerseys with an opportunity to get it. I thought Robert Copeland 92 was right there on the ball, but coming out of the pile. Well, 45 just came out of it with the ball. When you see the four man rush just getting pressure coming from the right side of your screen. Robinson doesn't see it coming. They try to pick up the ball to score. They don't do that. But fortunately for Hampton, they're able to come away with the football in great field position. Collapse in the pocket. I believe that's Jeremy German 45 who recovers it. 92 had it. He lost it, but keep your eyes on 45 here. 45 is there. He goes away with it. And you see Copeland try and land on it. He doesn't do it. And as you mentioned, number 45, Jeremy Jimmer doing a good job of picking it up. He never gave up on the play. Nicely done. And we had the first turnover of the night. Great field position for Hampton. And you don't see Bethune Cookman turn it over often. They led the nation in turnover margin last season. They're already number one in the MEAC this season, so they usually win that battle. And when, and when you talk to Coach Jenkins about it, he said, We just don't turn the football over. And we did in the loss against South Carolina State. And, you know, one of the things we mentioned. This game is under television review. The MEAC conference is the only conference in all of FCS football which says whenever we have a televised TV game, we have instant replay rules. And they're going to review this right now. It's pretty close. And 
you, you can't blame Coach Jenkins for trying, telling him to go to the field and see. And this is one of the toughest calls to make in all of football. But that, I think that's pretty clear. That was a fumble. I, yeah, I think so, too. The old empty hand. When he's moving <laughs> forward, the ball's not in that hand anymore. Robert Copeland is the guy that jars it loose. You see him there, number 92. And I don't think they're going to change the call on this one. And you know what I like he did? He hit the arm, but watch him grab the jersey. Once the ball's out, he's going to use that right hand to spin the quarterback mm -hmm. around, enabling, or I should say unenabling, where Robinson could not go back and get it. Robinson sees it on the ground. He wants to go get it, but he's being pulled out. You know, when we talked to Coach Rose of Hampton, one of the things he talked about, he was really upset in the lost Old Dominion. Poor tackling. He said, we didn't tackle well. We got to tackle better. So far, the tackling's been pretty good and a nice job of stripping the football on that play. Yeah, good job by the Pirate defense after the first drive, giving up the touchdown, really tightening things up and finding their rhythm, getting pressure on the quarterback. Anytime you can rush four down linemen against five offensive linemen and get to the quarterback, you're winning that battle. Defensive coordinators will take that every day. As you see, it look at head coach Brian Jenkins of Bethune-Cookman as they continue to take a look at it. want to remind you, ESPNU's coverage of college football continues Saturday night when Dan Mullen's Mississippi State team led by Vic Ballard hosts Louisiana Tech college football primetime presented by five hour energy on ESPNU Saturday at seven o'clock Eastern Vic Ballard could be first team all conference in a number of different leagues but in the SEC there's so many good backs he's not even in the top three Louisiana Tech meanwhile they had a 27 point lead in the second half against Houston and Case Keenum Case and company Keenum. came back and won the game. I mean, you know, that's a good thing. Anytime you've got a legitimate passing attack, you're always going to be in any football contest. Right. You can be down by 21 by 27. I mean, when I was in college, if we were down by 21, you know, we had a game against Towson. We were down by 21. I, I got excited. Review, the, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First and 10 Hampton University. First and goal. You know, and as a quarterback, you start to say we're down a lot, then I get more throws. There's only so many defenses they can play. There's no more element of surprise. Mm -hmm. After you throw the ball 40 times, you're going to know the looks, and you can put big stats up and catch up in a hurry if you've got a quarterback. Well, a huge play by the Hampton defense, and now a great opportunity for the Pirates offense here. First and goal, as you see their numbers thus far in the red zone, 13 drives, eight touchdowns, five field goals. They have scored in every opportunity. On first to the ground, straight ahead, nothing doing. Four, five black jerseys there to stop Jeremiah Schwartz. A loss of one on the play. Yeah, I don't know if the Pirates can win that matchup. You know, lining up against Bethune, trying to play smash mouth, control the line of scrimmage. Look at this. Bethune is too quick, and what people don't realize how strong they are. They can push you back and gain control of the line of scrimmage. Racing to the line, the Pirates on second down. Quarterback keeper Legree stretches forward and gets it to about the one and a half. Jarkevis Field saves a touchdown, four yards on that scamper. This is going to be a very tough yard for them to get. I mean, Legree was able to call his own number there, but this Wildcat defense is tough on the interior. Third and goal. They try to run it wide. No chance for Antoine Chisholm. Great open field tackle by Reggie Sandilands. I mean, they've got great defensive linemen and a very active linebacker in court. And Sandilands does a great job of going underneath the lead blocker and making the tackle for a loss in the backfield. We talk about Ryan Lewis gets a lot of the accolades, but Reggie Sandilands is a great football player, too. This amounts to an extra point for Torian Durham. 20 yards. Old is good, and so too is the kick. And the Pirates are on the board. 7 to 3, our score, Reggie Sandalan saving a possible touchdown with a great tackle. It'll be Bethune Cookman football when we return from Daytona. Start your. Pirates getting three points off the turnover, the first of the game. 538 remaining in the first quarter. It's Bethune Cookman on top. Seven to three. Turnovers, no question, going to be a big part of this ball game tonight. Ordinarily, Bethune Cookman dominates that category, but an early edge right now for the Hampton Pirates. And what a moral victory that is for Bethune Cookman's mm -hmm. defense. I mean, Hampton got the ball 
on the three yard line and kept them out of the end zone limiting them to only three points. That's a fantastic job by Reggie Sanderland and Ryan Lewis the linebackers for the, the Wildcats. This will be Courtney Keith but he's got no chance to return it. Kickoff goes out of bounds and a penalty on the play for that. So good field position for Bethune Cookman. Be sure to join us every Monday for the Palmer and Pollock Show on ESPNU at 1 and 9 Eastern Time. Jesse Palmer and David Pollock provide an engaging and interactive look at the past week's action and sets the scene for the upcoming week's big games. Strap yourself in for an entertaining and opinionated three-hour college football forum. That's college football on ESPNU. First and 10 from the 40 for the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. And that might be the second offsides penalty of the night on Hampton. Side defense, number 96, five yard penalty, first down. That's Charles Owens. When we talk about what's at stake, you know, Hampton, they beat Florida a which was big for them. South Carolina State with a huge victory. This is Rodney Scott. And Scott's got a whole lot of daylight inside the 10 and finally shoved out of bounds just shy of the pylon. Courtney Bridget saved a touchdown, 53 yards. Yeah, Rodney Scott, the transfer from Ole Miss, is going to see a crease and he sees daylight. Look how out of position the safety is, distracted by the three wide receivers to the field. Then it becomes a foot race and a good move there by Scott, forcing James Butts to miss. Good stiff arm at the end and Scott showing you the explosiveness he possesses. He came in averaging over six yards a carry. That number just got better. And it looks like we've got somebody cramping up on the field at about the 22. And there he is. That is number two, James Butts, a senior defensive back. Let's take another look at those MEAC standings. I think the key, you know, we've got him right in the middle of the pack, but that 1 0 for South Carolina State is huge. I mean, because they came down here and beat. Bethune Cookman Hampton is that one to know they beat Florida and them one of the powerhouses in the MIAC conference year in and year out but Hampton does not play South Carolina State so with Bethune Cookman having lost to South Carolina State if the Pirates can get the victory here tonight and not have to play South Carolina State things are looking up for them if they can get it done but that's a big if because right now this Wildcat football team on the defensive side of the ball is taking it to the Pirates. With Jay Walker, I'm Mike Morgan here from Municipal Stadium in Daytona Beach, Florida. Bethune Cookman leading the Hampton Pirates 7 to 3, 527 remaining in the first quarter. On the Wildcats' first drive, they marched down the field 75 yards, and the Pirates taking advantage of a turnover, cashing in with a field goal. That representing the lone score of the night thus far for Hampton, but already Bethune Cookman threatening ball parked on the one yard line. And, and that's the explosive nature they've gotten. You know, when you talk to them about Rodney Scott, he's a guy, he averages six yards per carry. And he catches the ball out the backfield at nine yards a catch, but has no touchdowns on the year. <laughs> and you saw right there, I thought he was going to get his first touchdown on the season, and you get tackled on the one-yard line. That's when you kind of say, Coach, keep me in there when we pound the ball in there. Well, if this is a fair world, he'll get the ball here. He does. He's up the middle. And he is pushed backwards. Great defensive stop by that Hampton defensive line. Penalty flags on the play. So already a number of penalty flags in this game. We're going to get to know Shannon Easton very well by the end of the night. Side. Defense. Number 31. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Uh, the penalty on Hampton's Gerald Francois. And there you see Wendell Gibson down, a junior out of Virginia Beach. He had 13 tackles last week. And, and they need Gibson. I mean, you always need your interior linebacker, but you really need him right now when another team is trying to pound the ball mm -hmm. in there. 
back up against your own red zone, and he's their run stopper. He's got great ability. Transferred from Virginia Tech last season. He started 12 games for the Hokies. Transferred down to Hampton. He's their interior linebacker, and the coaching staff is tell you the type of leadership he has. He's not a very vocal person, but he's still elected team captain on defense. So that's their rock, and they really need him to get, get up. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be okay. Let's take a look at some of the MEAC impact newcomers. Jay, I know you've been keeping a close watch. Yeah, and I think that's where FCS football has really changed in terms of not who you have on campus that you recruit, the two transfers to your campus. And the MEAC's got some good ones. Travis Davison, the running back from Morgan State, lighting it up. You see Lindell Gibson starting the middle linebacker for Hampton. Xavier Boyce added him to the list. Dominating figure, transferred from Virginia Tech to Norfolk State. Courtney Bridget, who we're seeing here from UNLV, has got great cornerback skills. And Rodney Scott, you saw him show up already as well. You see what he can do. The transfer from Old Miss can tote the rock. And Scott in the backfield on first and goal here. Robinson keeps it, and Robinson plunges into the end zone, waiting for the signal. Certainly looked like he got in from here as they peel away the bodies. And there's the signal. Touchdown. Touchdown for Jamar Robinson. Well, this is just muscle. Just your quarterback on that quarterback sneak. Get the snap, secure the ball, get low. So Bethune Cookman already finding the end zone twice. A chance to go up 14 to 3. Heard on for the point after. And he hammers it home. Let's check in with our ESPN News Studios. Rich standing by. Rich. Thanks, Mike. Another update from the Cincinnati NC State game, and the Bearcats continue to pour it on. Zach Caleros. All right, thank you so much. A little bit of a surprising Ooh. score there. NC State led by Coach O'Brien trying to turn the corner without Russell Wilson. Yeah, I talked to the leader of their all Tracy program, and he gave me a prediction before the game. He said, Jay, I'm telling you, put it on record. We're going to get a workout tonight. We're going to do 45 push-ups. He said he thinks that this offense is going to put 45 points up on Hampton. I looked at him like he was crazy. At this pace, though, I may have to go apologize to him. Uh, he might have to get in a little bit better shape. Maybe we could get to 60. That's what they had a few weeks ago when we were down there in Orlando for the MEAC Swag Challenge when they put over 60 points on the board. They are explosive, no question yes. about that. And uh, they'll go for the jugular. We know that. Yeah, you know, and if you talk about the loss to South Carolina State, I really do believe that their defense is just as good as South Carolina State. Their offense may be a little bit more explosive. South Carolina State outplayed them on special teams on that occasion, and that's why the Bulldogs were able to leave Daytona with the victory. Dixon and Washington. Onside kick. And an onside kick. Bethune Cookman says they've got it. They do have it. Anthony Jordan might have pounced on it. And now they're talking it over, trying to make sure did it go 10 yards. They're probably going to end up taking a review of this one. I thought it did. I mean, the ball, that was a good job of squibbing. The Hampton Pirates were 15 yards back. They were going back, setting up a return. <laughs> I just mentioned Brian Jenkins not afraid to go for the jugular. That's a, that's a good <laughs> spot. You just get a big score. You're up 11 early. And bam, you go right for the onside's kick. Offside. On the kicking team. Number 26. Five yard penalty. We went re kick. Maurice Roberts. Oh, that stings. Yeah, you know, this is one where you just got to stay at home. Look at Hampton clearly trying to set up the return. I mean, those guys are moving back 15, 20 yards. Great execution by Bethune. Having the patience to wait for, but they jumped offside. Hurd couldn't have done a better job on the kick. Yeah, that, that was perfect. You know, and this is what we talked about, those penalties that will really hurt you. You got a team down 14-3. You call the perfect play with the onside mm -hmm. kick. If you recover, you're looking at putting them down by at least two touchdowns. Instead, you get the mental error jumping off sides. You're jumping off sides, to me, that's a mental error. Right. Just You, you sit there and wait. And we talked about it with Coach Jenkins earlier in the week. He kind of downplayed it. He said, you know, I look back and some of the best teams in college football over the years have had a lot of penalties, but obviously he'd like to cut it back a little bit. Dixon on the return down at the 37-yard line. 
Well, it's a Twitter world. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash ESPNU, and let us know what you think. Tonight's question, should the MEAC have a championship football game? Tweet your thoughts. Let us know what you think, and follow us on twitter.com slash ESPNU. Now, I, know what, I know what Coach Jenkins thinks. He immediately said, no. nope, it's all about the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's the key. I think if you could have a championship game and go to the playoffs, I think they'd be all for it. But if you have to pick either or, yeah, uh, I'd say th th this is not SWAC football here. You know, they do that in the SWAC conference. But in the MEAC conference, you know, they've got a history of playoffs. And very first team to win the 1AA playoffs at the time was Florida A&M. On first down to the ground and a good game. Right near the first down marker. Give him nine yards. That's Antoine Chisholm, who's been rather quiet tonight. They need to get him involved more in the offense. Yeah, and Chisholm's a guy that's got that explosiveness. He can really score in a hurry. And back to the ground. Chisholm should have it about a yard. Well, it might depend on the spot very close. Chisholm came into this ball game leading the MEAC, averaging 81 yards a game. It's sort of a homecoming for him coming back to his home state. He's from Bell Glade, Florida. But, you know, when you've got a small back like this, they struggle to get that one yard, the one yard. They couldn't get it down on the goal line. Let's see if they can pick it up now in midfield. On third down. And this time on that second effort, I believe Chisholm's got it. Give him a yard that should move the chains. One thing about this Hampton offensive line, it's extremely young. They start four freshmen, and they're undersized, so it, it's hard for them to really dominate the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it is, and that's where, you know, they go to the spread offense, and it helps get them down the field. But when you got to play that smash mouth was pounded football, well, I think it's not necessarily their youthfulness, but it's just their aggressive mentality. They don't seem to have that quite yet. And they're going to... Break out the chain gang to measure this one. Certainly looks from here that he's got it. Rose, Booker, Harper, Alpici, and Nicholson, the offensive line. Four of those guys are freshmen. Now, the sophomore, Harper, he's a real good one. The center out of Bell Glade, Florida, who is the MEAC offensive lineman of the week. And I think the key is none of those starting linemen started last season. Right. You know, so you've got five new starters on the offensive line. And they are all 285 or less. That's the first first down of the game for the Hampton offense. They have really struggled a number of negative plays already. Important, you don't want to fall too far behind. Bethune-Cookman can light it up in a hurry. Legree dancing out of trouble and completes the pass at the 45. Right near the marker, that's Javaris Brown. First time we've called his name tonight. He's tied for the team lead with 15 receptions. Yeah, look at Legree. They're going to bring the pressure up the middle. And this time, Legree's going to get away from the grasp of Ryan Davis, the defensive end, keep his vision downfield, see the target, complete the pass. Now, one thing Hampton does that's unique. See where Legree's lined up now. He's five yards deep. He will get the snap and drop back another five yards. Most spread offenses, the quarterback takes the snap and they stay right there in the pocket. Mm -hmm. He gets back sometimes 10 yards, so it's very difficult to bring him down, but it also shows you the arm strength that he has. Going to tuck it and run here. He will have the first down as he lowers the head and falls forward for a three-yard pickup. That should be enough for a first down. David Legree, you get the feeling he's going to take some shots tonight. Hanks and Fenor on the tackle there. And don't you see, you know, the sign of a good defense, Hampton is clawing for every yard they can <laughs> get. I mean, they have daylight, and it disappears in a hurry. This is a very well-coached defensive unit that the Bill Cookman brings. And a timeout now on the field as the linesman coming in. And we're waiting on the chain gang to move. <laughs> the chain guys <laughs> fell asleep on the play. Got to move them up 10 yards, guys. First down and 10, under three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Already Bethune-Cookman up by 11. And now another whistle. Bethune-Cookman, that is our first charge timeout. Okay, Bethune-Cookman calls timeout. That was interesting. I don't know if... Ryan Jenkins wanted a timeout. 
I don't think that's what he wanted. He's See, he's, he's, he's arguing about the down and now uh, okay then he calls a timeout. Ah, uh, you did call the coach. I thought he had a good point saying yeah. he was arguing the down, but uh that's the universal sign for timeout. You make the T sign. Well, I'm not sure why he is convinced it should be fourth down. They found the marker on the last play. Everything that uh, we saw checked out to be a first and ten. Brian Jenkins not letting up. Jenkins. Bethune Cookman is challenging the ruling on the field. That is a first down. Well, this is interesting. Are they challenging the spot? Or are they actually challenging? You'd have to be challenging the spot because they had enough yardage for the first down on the last play. Yeah, I mean, that's what you were thinking. I know it was, you know, he needed about two yards. So we'll just kind of measure from where they are right here on this run. He had daylight early, went upfield. Yeah, yeah I, he's, I thought he he's got, got it. it right yeah, there. He, 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 got, he got the first down. He only needed a couple. That's what he got. So it should be first and ten. And you know, referee Shannon Easton almost seemed befuddled about how Coach Jenkins was actually challenging the down. You don't see that very often. Of course, it wouldn't be the first time in college football history that an officiating crew lost track of the down. We all remember the infamous fifth down play Colorado against Missouri several years ago. Well, Jay, let's talk about this first quarter thus far. I mean, Bethune Cookman right now, they seem to be battling and winning the battle on the line of scrimmage. And really, for David Legree, it looks like he's going to be running for his life all night. Yeah, and Bethune is aggressive on defense. We knew they would do that. Offensively, it seems like their offense is going to match the intensity level of their defense. They did not do that when they lost to South Carolina State. But as well as they're playing, Bethune sometimes continues to be their own worst enemy with the penalties, the untimely penalties, you know, taking the uh, offsides and getting the unsportsmanlike conduct. And if you let a team stay around long enough, those penalties will add up and you'll allow a team that you're better than to get back into the contest. Now, this is an early game, and you know, once Hampton gets this offense going, and they've got to have the ability to start converting on more third downs, then we're going to talk about a good football game. This is another look. Now, the line of scrimmage was the 45. He, he needed a couple. He's clearly got it. I don't think there's any chance they're going to reverse this. Right there, he's at the 45, and then with the dive forward, it appears pretty clear cut that he's got it. After further review, the play is confirmed. First and 10. Bethune Cookman will be charged with the time. So that was one of the more bizarre challenges that you'll see, but we're ready to go now. 2.31 remaining, Bethune-Cookman on top, 14-3. to three. And, uh, Jay, obviously it's important for Hampton. I know it's early. I know there's a lot of football to be played, but you don't want to fall behind three, four scores in the first half. No, you don't. You know, and they've done that several times this season and actually come back and got the victory against Alabama A&M in their season opener. But Alabama A&M, I don't know if they have the defensive the uh, unit that Bethune Cookman has tonight. You're playing against a good offense, a good defense. You've got to be there every play. On first down, he rifles it, does Legree to the 35, complete to Reginald Hicks, a senior out of Hampton. See, now you get the completion on first down, and then that allows offensive coordinator Sneed to run his offense, to get Bethune guessing, are they going back to the same player or not, to get up that high-tempo type of offense they want to establish. Now second and three. Legree buying time. Coxon fires and dropped by McLeod. He was wide open in the flat. And a penalty flag on the play. And it is on Hampton. Looked like a tripping signal. I hope Shannon brought a bottle of chloroseptic. <laughs> Of 
Coriel Peachy. See, we talked about, look where he lines up. That's five yards deep. Now the offensive line is going to back up two yards. See, they back up. Now when Legree gets ready to deliver this ball, make his read, he's at 11 yards from the line of scrimmage. Now you see the trip right there, but that was more of a rollover. I don't know how you call that a trip. <laughs> he just gave. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't stand firm at all. He gave his ground. They called that the tripping call, but very tough for you to get to the quarterback when he's 11, 12 yards downfield. But give credit to David Legree. Takes tremendous arm strength to be a passer when every throw is going 15, 20 yards down the field. Yeah, he's got a great arm. He'll need it here. Second down and 18. Flushed out. Fires deep into coverage. Touchdown! Caught by Isaiah Thomas. 50 yards. And Hampton has found pay dirt for the first time tonight. What a throw by David Legree. I mean, this was a great throw. I didn't think he could throw the ball that far because he was rolling to his left. Watch him escape the pocket and move, get movement to the left side. Now he's got to square those shoulders. He sees this guy downfield. He's on the 48-yard line, throws that ball 52 yards into the end zone in the air beyond the secondary for the score. Running to his left, across his body, taking a shot by Sandilands. What an incredible play by the senior, David Legree. And a huge play for Hampton. Yeah, and this is why the NFL scouts are saying there's something here with this young man. Arm strength like this, you don't teach it. You either have it or you don't. Full stride, let the ball go, accurately thrown, and got hit. I mean, look, he knows he's going to get hit. Look at him duck at the end. And the good concentration by Isaiah Thomas to get into the end zone and great individual effort by David Legree. Shades of Jay Skywalker. You can't teach that arm, right? You either have it or you, you don't. Have I mean, you at, don't. at this level in the game, and he's got it. You know, we <laughs> always say he throws a great fastball. Well, that was a great muscle ball right there. I've been wanting to say this. Is Brooklyn in the house? <laughs> well, they are tonight. He's from Brooklyn, New York. Good play there by David Legree. He leads the BAC in total yards of 273 a game. He's been taking shots all night long. He's been running for his life. But a terrific throw that, quite frankly, most quarterbacks just aren't going to be able to make. Seven play drive for the Pirates. 63 yards and the first touchdown of the night for Hampton. And David Legree's already breathing heavy. He deserves it, but trust me, you don't want to make a living. Avoiding Wildcat defenders <laughs> in your own backfield all night long. Courtney Keith back to receive the kickoff. It's short. And it's out of bounds. That is such a deflator. You just score a touchdown, and now you put the other team at the 40. <laughs> and they did it before when they kicked the field goal. Right. They kicked the ball out of bounds. And I need to go back to that tail of the tape. I may give the advantage <laughs> of special teams to Bethune Cook when you keep doing that, young man. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 40 yard line. First and 10. You know what's so you know what's so disheartening about it is Donovan Rose, the head coach, he was a special teams coach for years, so we're gonna we're gonna call this a uh-uh. Is it a draw? <laughs> it's gonna be a draw. Right now, advantage Bethune Cookman when you talk about special teams play. Well, if I was allowed to do that, my SAT score would have been much better. <laughs> <laughs> they give you erases on those pencils, you yes, know. but not after you hand it in. You're usually not allowed to change it. On first down, the Wildcats going to the ground, and it is stuffed right near the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard for Rodney Scott. Well, now you got to see with a little momentum what the Hampton defense can do, because so far they've been outshined by this Bethune-Cookman offense. They have it for Hampton. It all starts with the front four. If they can get pressure and disrupt the Wildcat offense with those D-line. Those guys right there that got their knees down on all fours, they've got to win that battle in the line of scrimmage. Robinson from the gun, hands it off, and ridden down from behind. Big Robert Copeland just lassoed Rodney Scott after a two-yard gain. And this is how you got to play that spread option. If you're the defensive end and you're Copeland, you got to identify quickly. Watch his read recognition. They're not going to block me. Watch him chase it down. They don't block him. He chases it down with the tackle there. That's perfect defense on that little dart option that all these college football teams like to run. Now third down in the long seven. Go, 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 
Robinson takes his time. Hampton showing blitz. They bring it. Robinson fires incomplete. See Lindell Gibson, the inside linebacker for Hampton. He's going to shoot that A gap. Let's see who picks him up. I think it was the running back right there. Good job. I like it. We don't have a lot of size. If you're Isidore Jackson, just throw all your weight there. He's only 190 pounds, but if you've got a center helping you, good hit. Kowalski on the punt. Big stop for the Hampton defense. Momentum starting to shift here. This one will not be returnable, and it'll take a Bethune Cookman bounce and roll. As it rolls dead at the 18. I think one of the defining moments so far in this first quarter, Bethune fumbles the football down and Hampton recovers on the three yard line. Second down, Legree gets about as close as they can get. Then on third down, no sir. Reggie Sandaland shoots the gap, brings down the running back Chisholm and the, held the Pirates to only three points. Otherwise, we'd be looking at a tie ball game. Yeah, and at that point, everything was going Bethune Cookman's way. You wondered where we were heading with this football game because everything had been dominated by Bethune Cookman. But a great defensive stop there by Hampton after the touchdown, and now a chance to even take the lead. From the 16, they run it wide, and no chance. Reginald Dixon. And that'll likely be the final play of the first quarter. A loss of five on the play after a lengthy lightning delay. An entertaining first quarter here from Daytona Beach. Bethune Cookman leading it 14 to 10. Second quarter coming your way when we return. Municipal Stadium. Where the Bethune Cookman Wildcats call home. The lightning, the rain, the bands, the hitting, and a lot of scoring early on. College football on the U. A full slate of games begins Saturday at noon. The first generation of 3D T still leads 21-7, guys. Start of the second quarter with Bethune Cookman leading Hampton by a score of 14 to 10. It was a 14 3 lead for the Wildcats, but Hampton has come storming back, taking advantage of a turnover for a field goal and then a 50 yard touchdown pass from that man, David Legree, the senior quarterback who has spent much of the night running for his life and taking some big shots, but his arm has already made some big plays in this game for Hampton. What you have to be cautious about. If you're Hampton here, if you got a quarterback that takes a deep drop, you start getting backed up close to your own end zone, you want to shorten those drops a little bit. Maybe start utilizing the quick pass game. I think what we saw in the play before that, last time Hampton had the ball, they tell you about the team speed of Bethune Cookman. They tried that sweep with Reggie Dixon, who's the second fastest man in America, mm -hmm. and Bethune Cookman was able to wrestle him down. Legree on play action. Got him. Looking deep, far side. He's got him at the 40. That's Chisholm. Chisholm makes a move at midfield and into Wildcat territory. 40-yard pickup for Antoine Chisholm. Three-level vertical throw. He's got three levels going. This is Chisholm here. He's going to go ahead and get on his horse, get out the screen in a hurry. They fake the stock block. One guy going deep down the middle of the field. Chisholm attacks that right side. Great execution, great play call. Big plays now going Hampton's way and a nice move there by McLeod. McLeod with one man to beat, makes a move at the 20 and finally is wrestled down at the 10. 38 yards on that play. DJ Howard saved a touchdown. Give credit to their offense. What are they doing? They're going with misdirection now. Where's the ball? Is it to the right? Is it to the left? We give it to our little scat back McLeod in space. He makes somebody miss, and then it becomes a foot race. McLeod, one of the many players out of Bell Glade, Florida, in tonight's ball game. I think they figured it out. They realized the dude was so strong, we can't run at him. So let's give him some misdirection. If we try and beat him to the outside, they were too quick. On first down, back to the ground. This is Dixon. And Dixon is bottled up. No gain on the play. Jarkevis Fields with another tackle. 
And a lot of jawing going on back and forth. A penalty flag over there at the three yard line. We can't make it through three plays without some laundry on the field. Well, if you're Hampton, you'd hate to have a 15 yarder here. McLeod and Daniel Rhodes, the defensive back. You see him there on the right. Plays down, and you see them leave your screen. Wrestling still going on over there. Meanwhile, it's still second and goal. I think you got to throw the ball right now if you're Hampton. They go back to the ground. And a nice open field tackle Schwartz on the carry and it looked like DJ Howard got him tripped up. That's a great play by Howard. The second time he has saved a big play already on this drive. When you're going to play that free safety position so often the tackles you make are touchdown saving tackles and that was one right there where DJ Howard did a good job of bringing down the ball carry because he was the last line of defense. Now third down and goal. Legree rolling out, lobs it up and out of the reach of the intended target, Jeremiah Schwartz, the running back out of Orlando, Florida. So the field goal unit out of the field, and after two huge plays to get inside the 10, the Bethune Cookman defense stiffened up. Yeah, they had their opportunity. I thought when they got down there on the in the 10 yard line, you got to start throwing the football. You know, the going to control that line of scrimmage. They're going to overpower you. Don't try and soften them up with the run. You need to soften them up with the pass first. 25 yard attempt for Tarian Durham. And he missed it. He hooked it left. Tough break for the Hampton Pirates. 14 10 our score. We'll check out some news and notes from the HBCU when we return. Um. Mike Morgan alongside Jay Walker. Our score 14 to 10. Bethune Cookman on top. And Jay, a lot of things going on around the HBCU. Yeah, it all starts with South Carolina State. They're ranked number one in the SBN poll at a one and two record. Then you've got Texas Southern playing great defense as they always do. We'll see them next week against Jackson State on Thursday night football. Love it. On play action, it's Robinson holding on to it and throws it away. Nobody was open. Terrific coverage by the Hampton defense. No, then Casey Terrio. If you don't know the name, get to know it. Swack player of the week. I think he's arguably the best quarterback in all of SCS football. And next week on Thursday night, we've got Texas Southern going to Jackson State. So not only do you get to see Casey Terrio on TV live and in action, but he's going against the number one defense in the SWAC. Mm in the country as well so that's going to be a great match up there he can really throw it unstoppable force immovable object something's got to give right what i tell you earlier as long as you got a quarterback nothing is immovable <laughs> if you've got a quarterback you can throw it against anybody well both these teams have quality quarterbacks robinson orchestrating the controls here for bethune cookman wildcats going five wide on second and ten And Robinson in a whole lot of trouble, and he is pummeled about a yard ahead of the line of scrimmage. Lindell Gibson walloped him. This is probably the third time tonight we've seen Robert Copeland go unblocked for Hampton, number 92. That must be their game plan. Just We're just going to not block the last man on the line of scrimmage. This is Copeland right here. They're not blocking him. They're just letting him release, get free releases, and do what he wants. I don't think Jamar Robinson got had a vote on that. I think he'd like to have somebody block number 92. Third down and nine. Pirates rushing five. Robinson surveys and completes it. 
Beautiful pass. He really threaded the needle. Completes it to Keith Stroud, another transfer from Rutgers. That was a big time throw. He took a big hit up the middle by Lindell Gibson with pressure on the quarterback. How he delivered that ball, I don't know. And give Stroud credit because he took a hit when he caught it and he held on to the ball. What do we say? When you see good defenses, you've got that window of opportunity for a split second before somebody hits you. So a big first down for the Wildcats. Quarterback keeper Robinson picking his way through tacklers and dives forward for a gain of nine. That was all Jamar Robinson. I beg your pardon. That is actually Jackie Wilson now. Jackie Wilson, who was a starting quarterback for much of last season, actually started their playoff game. And now he's in the game. On second and one. That play stacked up. I love it on the carry. No gain. And I think they actually... Uh, Jamar Robinson might have gone out with that hit that was delivered by Gibson mm. came out for a play then Jackie Wilson came in so he's looking anxious and I think what happens the backup gets in there makes a couple good runs let him get his feet wet for a little while when Wilson comes in game plan changes a little bit they become more run oriented and see if the Pirates can recognize that and add an extra defender in the box to take away the running game from the field. third down and one and you had a Bethune Cookman player racing off the field I don't think he beat the clock Offense. 12 players on the field. Five yard penalty. Third down. You know, there's never a good time for that penalty, but when it's third and short, it's a really bad time. Penalties mounting up here in the first half. Because yeah, you like to say third and one, third and less than three, we call manageable, makeable third down situation. Third and six to ten. Uh, percentages go down on the chances of conversion. And now a timeout called by Bethune Cookman. Bethune Cookman, that is a second charge timeout. Be sure to follow us on twitter.com slash ESPNU and let us know what you think. Tonight's question again, should the MEAC have a championship football game? Tweet your thoughts, let us know what you think, and follow us on twitter.com slash ESPNU. Well, we heard from Franklin Burris, the MEAC should maintain the current format as a champion is decided on the field. I think I think a lot of people could learn a lesson from that, right? No. <laughs> decide the champion on the field. You mean you don't like computers and random voters selecting who gets to play for the national championship? I mean, I, I was fortunate enough in the NFL to be on playoff teams every year. And even when I was in college in the FCS playoffs, it was one double at the time. There's nothing like playoff atmosphere. Yeah. Every third down is intense. Every yard's important. Every turnover is critical. You bring out the best in everybody. And I just think that you got to figure out a way to allow all championships to be determined on the field. I've never heard a fan of football at this level, the FCS level, say, I just don't like that whole playoff thing. Let's, <laughs> let's change the system. Everybody seems to think it works pretty well. Critical third and six right here. On play action. A little screen pass set up. And some nifty running past midfield by Anthony Jordan for a first down. 14 yard scamper by Jordan. He did a good job of setting up his blocks where he thought this would have been sniffed out by the defense. He's going to make the first guy miss. Watch him set it up. The guy misses it, gives him the quick cut move, look at the vision, sees where the lane is. Anthony George is the biggest running back they've got on the roster. He goes six feet, 220 pounds, so he's got that extra lean. Nice block there by the right guard, Corey Mason, as well, to help set him free. Back to the ground game, love it. With three yards, setting up a second down and seven. Under 10 minutes to go in the first half, Bethune Cookman once led this game 14 3. Hampton rallying back. Now 14 to 10. They had a golden opportunity. First and goal inside the 10. Drive stalled and then missed a chip shot field goal. Rodney Scott in the game. Goes in motion. They fake it his way and instead go the other side to Eddie Poole. Eddie Poole always dangerous with the ball in his hands. Wrestled down past the 35. A first down but another penalty flag. Mm -hmm. 
Eddie Poole's second team all MEAC a year ago. Came over with Coach Jenkins. Offense, number 10. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, second down. And that's on Keith Stroud, the receiver. Yeah, that's going to be right there. You see, he's got too much jersey to transfer. He's a transfer from Rutgers as well. Once you get engaged right there. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Greco Roman wrestling, you get a couple points for that. <laughs> yeah, that, that. That was the obvious nature right there. Nine penalties already in this game. Second and 11. Draw play. And a pretty good pickup for Jackie Wilson. Jackie Wilson's only a sophomore at a Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You know, and they still they're leaving Copeland unblocked again. He's got to make those tackles in the backfield for loss. You are the you are the chosen one. Get the speed, get to the quarterback. But I still believe that Hampton has not quite made the adjustment on defense. You've got a new quarterback in there. Have we seen them throw the ball beyond 10 yards since nope. Wilson got into the game? It's been wide receiver screen, running back screen. Go ahead, crowd that line of scrimmage and force them to throw the ball down the field. Third and three here. And the ball's on the ground. Oh and a fight for it, I believe. Wilson got it back. He did, but it'll be a big loss on the play. A loss of seven, and no doubt Bethune Cookman will have to punt it away. And this is just on that ride, that riding out. You've got a running back coming across formation full speed. That's your responsibility as a quarterback to belly that football. Don't allow him to knock it out of your grasp. Drives that stall right about midfield because of mental error by the quarterback. Once again, not bellying that football, allowing the ball to hit the turf. Javaris Brown is back to receive the punt. If it ever comes. And he's going to take it himself. And he's got a convoy down the sideline and a first down. Kerry Kowalski just kept waiting and waiting. There was only one jersey in front of him, and he was blocked. If you're going to do the rugby kick, this is what you do. Nobody comes. He's got an envoy, three guys against one. Once he recognizes that, great job of knocking him down. Then he just goes around the outside. A <laughs> little bit better athlete probably would have taken that to the house. Who would have thought Kerry Kowalski <laughs> would have one of the big pickups in this game? Now, it's official. Special teams, Bethune Cookman's winning. Hampton's made several mistakes on special teams, which is very untypical of them. And Bethune Cookman's starting to take advantage. Jamar Robinson back in the game for Bethune Cookman. And plowing ahead is Isidore Jackson. All right, so let's make it official. Bethune Cookman gets it right here on defense. I'm still giving it a draw, and offensively, uh, let's do this. Let's give them one. And a fumble on the play, and Hampton has it. Robert Copeland. Boy, the ball must have squirted out very late. It's Copeland. Oh. That is all Copeland. He pulled it out. Absolutely just tore it away. Yeah, I mean, the only thing you could hope for was the forward progress whistle. They didn't blow the whistle. Great job, Robert Copeland. We said you were the guy. You were the chosen one. He does a good job of reacting and getting the big play for the Pirate defense. Robert Copeland's going to need an oxygen tank tonight. <laughs> big turnover. First and ten. Hampton to the ground. And a couple on the play for Chisholm. Give him three yards, a sophomore out of Bell Glade, Florida. That's Glade Central High School, and you've got a number of players and coaches from that high school represented in this game. Second down and seven. Again, running between the tackles is Chisholm. And he'll gobble up about two more yards, setting up a third down and five. Have you noticed the adjustment that happened? has been making, they've been lining Legree up underneath the center. And I think the reason they want to do that is because they're doing the misdirection. Mm -hmm. The quarterback can turn his back to the line of scrimmage. The defense can't see it. Oh, 
Room on the right side. And shifting his way past the 45 is Jorian Washington. Well, we've seen a number of different players tote the rock tonight for the Pirates. Yeah, they started to focus on the quarterback having the ball. Obvious passing situation. What do they do? They continue with the sweep. Quickly to the line is Legree. And another carry up the middle. There's not much daylight up the middle against that Bethune-Cookman front. Maybe a couple on that play. 91, Tevin Tony on the stop. Now that you've established, you can run the ball from the quarterback underneath the center. Got to be thinking they're going to set him up for the play action pass. Very unique play calling for Hampton. And they're led by offensive coordinator Willie Sneed. He's another one of those Glade Central guys. Running it wide on second and long and a nice open field hit. That was a big time lick. Reggie Dixon on the carry, but Reggie Sandilands, he doesn't miss many, does he? No, he doesn't. He's always going to be in the right position to make a play. You know, he's got a high football IQ, and this is just reading and recognizing, not allowing anybody to get outside angle. He sees it. He gets on his horse right away. Doesn't allow anything to get outside him. That's what you're taught at the outside linebacker position. Nothing gets outside of you. Keep your leverage, keep your angle of pursuit in check. Reggie Sandlin, that's how you coach him. Hampton just 58 yards on the ground. Bethune Cookman bringing the blitz here. Legree gets it away somehow, caught at the 40. Past the 30. And finally tripped up is Isaiah Thomas, a first down, 18-yard reception, and a great job by Legree to get rid of this football. Yeah, schematically, the play wasn't fair, but two individual efforts. First, by Legree. He sees a guy going across, knows he's going to get hit, throws it across his body, gets it to him, and then Isaiah Thomas, great run after catch. Schwartz on the carry, and he's got 11, maybe 12, another first down. See, they've got him on the ropes. You see how quickly they're getting up to the line of scrimmage. They feel that Bethune Cookman may be a little winded, or they may have a personnel disadvantage for Bethune, so they're attacking him right now, not allowing them to make any substitutions. Legree out of the gun. See if they learned their lesson from the last time they were in the red zone where they tried to force the run. I think you keep them spread out and you start throwing the football. They fake the handoff. Legree takes it himself and stumbles forward to about the three. Six yards for David Legree. Calling his own number there. Let that fullback or running back be your lead blocker. And he just wants it right now. That was just complete effort by Legree. Legree. Dives, touchdown! Hampton Pirates, David Legree, and how good was the senior quarterback on that drive? He simply wanted it. I mean, that's what you want your seniors to do. They've got to want it a little bit more, realizing what's at stake. All started with that throw across his body when he knew he was getting hit to keep the drive alive. And once they got the ball within the 15-yard line, he called his number, consecutive plays, rewarded with the touchdown. Uh, the Pirates, who have... Had a couple of drives stall inside the red zone, not that time. Durham. The extra point is good. 17-14 our score. Hampton on a roll. We'll see if the Wildcats can respond when we return. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by AutoZone. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And by Progressive, making it easy to buy car insurance. Mike Morgan alongside the one and only former NFL quarterback, Jay Skywalker. Great ball game thus far. Hampton leading at 17-14. Points off of turnovers. That's been the story right now, Jay. 10-0 Hampton. Yeah, Hampton capitalizing on it. Bethune's got to recognize this is not the 2010 season. You must protect the football. They're not doing a good job. And speaking of NFL, number of NFL scouts here at this contest tonight, they came to see all the defensive players that are on both these squads. But guess who's stealing the spotlight? David Legree showing, hey, with my size and strength, I belong as well, too. Talk to their coaching staff, and they say there are a number of teams that are intrigued 
by him. They, they, they wonder if he's a project that you can kind of grow something out of. The leadership he's showing this senior year, there's something there. Kick return by Cabrera. And another penalty flag. This one's coming back as Cabrera is brought down at the 30, but in all likelihood, Bethune Cookman will be backed up. A 22 yard return. And the busy Shannon Easton, the referee tonight. You know, in football, like I'm a body English guy. Uh -huh. in, in, in television commentating, it's more like a voice English guy. And your voice English there wasn't good that last one. It was kind of like, and another <laughs> penalty flag. I feel you, though. I feel you. <laughs> hey, but it's, it's not nearly as frustrating for me as it is the coaches. During the return, they go block in the back. On the receiving team, number 19. That penalty is declined. Holding number 29 of the receiving team. That penalty will be accepted 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, they got their money's worth. It's two yeah. on one play. Two for one. Big weekend of college football coming up Saturday on the U. We'll tell you about it when we return. Start your college football Saturday at 9 a.m. with ESPN News Tailgate. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by AutoZone. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And by Progressive, making it easy to buy car insurance. Mike Morgan alongside the one and only former NFL quarterback, Jay Skywalker. Great ball game thus far. Hampton leading at 17-14. Points off of turnovers. That's been the story right now, Jay. 10-0 Hampton. Yeah, Hampton capitalizing on it. The Thunes got to recognize this is not the 2010 season. You must protect the football. They're not doing a good job. And speaking of NFL, number of NFL scouts here at this contest tonight, they came to see all the defensive players that are on both these squads. But guess who's stealing the spotlight? David Legree showing, hey, with my size and strength, I belong as well, too. Talking to their coaching staff, and they say there are a number of teams that are intrigued by him. They, they, they wonder if he's a project that you can kind of grow something out of. The leadership he's showing this senior year, there's something there. Kick return by Cabrera. And another penalty flag. This one's coming back as Cabrera is brought down at the 30, but in all likelihood, Bethune Cookman will be backed up. A 22 yard return. And the busy Shannon Easton, the referee tonight. You know, in football, like I'm a body English guy. Uh -huh. in, in, in television commentating, it's more like a voice English guy. And your voice English there wasn't good that last one. It was kind of like, and another <laughs> penalty flag. I feel you, though. I feel you. <laughs> hey, but it's, it's not nearly as frustrating for me as it is the coaches. During the return, they go block in the back. On the receiving team, number 19. That penalty is declined. Holding number 29 of the receiving team. That penalty will be accepted 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, they got their money's worth. It's two yeah. on one play. Two for one. Big weekend of college football coming up Saturday on the U. We'll tell you about it when we return. Great game they play up there. The Urban League Classic, 45, 50,000 people. The new MetLife 40th anniversary of that game. So looking forward to see a good contest. Both teams really need that W. Scott, the back behind Robinson. He gets it. Off right tackle. And is tripped up after a good gain of about eight yards. McGee on the tackle. Mm -hmm. It's funny how quickly momentum can shift in a football game. I mean, it was all Bethune-Cookman in that first quarter. Look at it now. Individual effort by David Legree. I mean, that's been the answer right there. His ability to make plays, to make something out of nothing. The big plays really hurt him. 
We've talked about the significance of this game for both teams. If you want to win the MEAC this year, you really can't afford to take a loss tonight. On second down, and that play is blown up. Big time pursuit by Gerald Francois, the senior out of Fort Lauderdale, number 31. And a penalty flag on the field. Watch him time this coming from your right side. Francois launches himself like a missile in the backfield. Yeah. Takes down the ball carry in a hurry. Six penalties now on Bethune Cookman. Second personal foul. This one on Javaris Johnson. And again, Jay, at some point, that's going to cost you a ball game. I mean, it really is. I mean, look at it now. You're trying to get into your four minute offense, maybe get the ball to the 30 yard line. Then you can go into your fast paced two minute offense. Now, they'd be very fortunate just to hold on to the ball and get a first down. 11 penalties overall in this first half. Third down and 13. And a conservative play call here, and Hampton reads it all the way. Lindell Gibson, who's having one heck of a night, with a great tackle in the backfield, a loss of five. If Hampton's going to stop some runs, you're going to look for number four to be somewhere around the football. Got that linebacker instinct. Talked to their defensive coordinator, Keith Gilganis. He said he plays middle linebacker for us, but he could play outside linebacker for us, too, if we need him to. Javaris Brown back to receive. And he won't be able to make a play on this one. Good field position for the Pirates when we return. 17-14, our score. So your 2.30 canceled. Are you forgetting something? My breakfast. Get me something? Delicious. Something wholesome. Okay. The big games coming up, including LSU visiting Morgantown, Oklahoma State A&M, and the ever-evolving saga that is the Big 12 Conference. All that with Jason Seahorn and Charles Arperkel coming up at the half, guys. Okay, thank you, Rich. And uh, a lot of drama going on in college football on and off the field as you look at the top ten right now. Oklahoma with that big win in Tallahassee. They deserve that number one spot. LSU can make another statement with a win at Morgantown. What a defense that the hat has this year going for him. Alabama, pretty good defense as well. And you see the rest of the top ten. A lot of good football teams. A lot of things going to start separating, though, Jay. Yeah, there are. But, you know, once again, we're facing that dilemma. The number four team in the country. They're going to be there. Boise State looks better than ever. Kellen Moore is going to leave college football as the all-time winningest quarterback. Legitimate Heisman Trophy contention. Will he get an opportunity to win a national championship? He's like a robot back there. Legree has all day to throw it. And it's tipped and intercepted. No dropped. Boy, how in the world did that ball hit the turf? I thought for sure Bethune Cookman looked like 29. Dion Hanks had it right in his grasp. He, he did what you're supposed to do. Legree's got all type of time there. Ball gets tipped with the hand and go up and get it at its highest point. Watch him leave his feet. He goes up to Ooh. get it, but he had it and then he slammed into the turf. And that's when it came loose. Reginald Hicks involved in the play for Hampton. Now second down and 10 under two minutes to go in the first half. Legree in trouble flares it out to the right and Chisholm who's been busy in the receiving game gobbles up seven yards there. I like what they do with the deep drop. See by Legree being 10 yards deep it gives his check down the opportunity to get very much out to get really wide outside the formation and once Legree feels any type of pressure he knows where the check down is he just dumps it off to him and the ball carriers have the ball in open space with an opportunity to pick up yards. Big third and three here four wide it's Legree on the keeper 
Legree, some nifty footwork at the 25. He's got daylight. Legree inside the five and into the end zone. Touchdown, Hampton. 37 yards for David Legree. Ryan Davis is a tremendous defensive end for Bethune-Cookman, but they do that option off of him. He goes down with the ball carry. That's him number 49 in black. And once he gives up that leverage, he's chasing the play down. Quarterback outrunning the defensive end. If you got a great defense, and schematically you can't beat them, you need great individual efforts. And we've been saying that time and time again about David Legree, the senior quarterback for Hampton University. Extra point is good. Another big play by David Legree. He goes 6'4", 225, but boy, he's pretty shifty for that size. Coverage of high school football continues on ESPNU tomorrow night as Lake Oswego out of New York. The Lakers taking on intrastate rival Jesuit Crusaders. See the future stars of football today. Geico ESPN High School Football Showcase on ESPNU tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern time. With Jay Walker, I'm Mike Morgan here from Daytona Beach. Bethune Cookman, who led this game 14 to 3. All of a sudden now 21 unanswered points by the Pirates. All the momentum on their side, and that man, David Legree, putting on a clinic. He's playing well. Don't celebrate too much, though. Plenty of football left out there. Bethune's going to make a run for him at some point. You know, that's something I remember learning from Warren Moon. You know, you're the quarterback. You never want to be too happy. You never mm -hmm. want to be too down. You just want to have that level flow like there's more business that needs to be done. That's a minute 25 left in the first half, young man, not in the game. <laughs> in the game exactly. A lot of football to be played. Nice drive by the Pirates. They only needed three plays and 29 seconds to find the end zone. It's Courtney Keith back to receive. He's dangerous, but a nice ankle tackle at the 20 after a 21-yard return. Sheridan top 10. What are you looking at here, Jay? Well, I mean, South Carolina State got it by means of the win over Bethune-Cookman. They're, they're number one. Jackson State ineligible for the SWAC championship, but... They're still ranked third. They've got a really good team. And then Albany State, great defense year in, year out. Watch out for Alabama State. You know, they made it to the SWAC championship game last year. A lot of people don't give them a lot of respect. They've got a transfer quarterback from Troy along with Dominguez, who was back as well. They're really surprising people. And with this victory, if whoever wins this game, I think will probably go to that number two spot. I yep. really do think that if Hampton wins this game, they can jump that high to number two. Wow. And if Bethune wins the game, they'll stay at number two. That's Angelo Cabrera, and that is an incredulous look on the face of Coach Jenkins. Oh. Well, there it is. Late. Let's go, y'all! Could have called it on a number of <laughs> yeah, black jerseys. They all came in there pushing bodies, and that's just something, you know, it's got to be frustrating as a coach because this is not the first time they play like this this right. season. They did it in the Miak Swag game in which we called. Yep. And then when they played South Carolina State, they did it. And now they're doing it again. Sometimes old habits are hard to break, averaging over 10 penalties a game and well on their way to surpass that mark tonight. First and 10 from the 11. Robinson barking out the signals. Snap comes. Pressure from the backside. He'll keep it and run. And scurries for about seven. And another penalty flag on the field. Shannon Easton, who has... Been very busy thus far tonight. Offense, number 74. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. That's on Corey Mason. Now, now I think this really changes what you do. Hampton has all three of its timeouts. Mm -hmm. You've got a team backed up. They were in a prevent defense. Now I think you can go after them with your front seven, have your front four play back. Don't give up the big play. Get some pressure, try and create a fumble, get a timeout, and you'll get the ball with great field position if you can get a stop in the three and out right now. 
eight penalties already for Bethune Cookman and without question that has been a factor for the Wildcats in this first half. On first and 15, another penalty flag. Rodney Scott on the carry. I mean, at some point, you got to clean it up. Yeah, you know, they had what they wanted. You know, Bethune was basically giving up the first half. Any chance of scoring, they were going to run the ball. You stuffed the run. You could have used your three timeouts and maybe manufactured some points at the end of the half, but penalty. Did I mention Shannon Easton is our referee tonight? I thought she was our sideline reporter. <laughs> She's working sideline for us, right? She's from the state of Arizona. Offside. Defense. Number 97. Five-yard penalty. First down. Ian Davidson, the guilty party there. Sideline interference. Bethune Cookman. Wow. Five-yard penalty. Sideline interference. You, you can go a whole season without seeing that penalty. I mean, you know, the teams are getting penalties out there and the sideline, the coaching staff, everybody's getting penalties as well. They've got to tighten it up. I mean, this is almost becoming unbearable to watch. <laughs> I, I've seen some different things in a college football game, but this is a new one in penalties. Do we just have another delay of game? Well, they just backed him up five more. I think they might have had the spot wrong initially. Now they've got it right. Or do they? Brian Jenkins is livid. And so is anybody that likes flow and continuity. So, uh, you get a chance to check out the beach while you were here in town? Uh, it's just beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. I noticed you have to pay now to, to drive your car in the beach. <laughs> so I elected not to go that route. But, uh, yes, very lovely. Always love coming to Daytona Beach. It's been a great first half. It's just been marred by a litany of penalties. Under 30 seconds to play now. On first down, that pass is actually hauled in by Eddie Poole. Pass was low. Poole could do nothing with it. And I think right now Bethune Cookman is just content with running out the clock, getting into the locker room, getting that composure back, and hope to find that magic again that they had in the first quarter. Yeah, they, they definitely controlled the game the first 15 minutes, but penalties and they allowed Hampton to stick around. And you allow teams to hang around, sooner or later they'll come back and bite you. 24 to 14, our score. A lot of push-ups tonight with a high-scoring first half. Let's get you to the studio for the State Farm Halftime Report with Rich Hollenberg. Believe it or not, they're sitting next to each other, former UCLA Bruin. You are watching ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by McDonald's. 24 to 14, our halftime score. Hampton leading Bethune Cookman. And as we take a look at tonight's Alexis playbook, Jay Hit has been all about David Legree. Yeah, the fact that Bethune has found ways to bottle them up, but it's been individual efforts like this all night that have really hurt the Wildcats. The big play, showing you the ability to avoid the rush and throw the ball downfield. Calling his own number once he got to the red zone to get to the end zone and just making great reads with the football. He's been playing spectacular, calling his own number, making the individual effort. Single-handedly, he's almost picked apart this Wildcat defense. Now the numbers on David Legree tonight, 6 of 10 passing, 129 yards, a 50-yard touchdown pass. He really threaded the needle on that one. And then 7 for 41 on the ground, two more scores. So we talked about at the outset, he can beat you in both ways, and that's what he's done so far. Yeah, and he's got such a strong arm. I don't know if there's another quarterback in the country that can throw a better ball than he threw with that 52-yard touchdown pass to let the ball go and out-throw the secondary for Bethune-Cookman. So Bethune Cookman will get the ball first here in the second half. A chance to change the momentum. I mean, you know, if you're Bethune Cookman and Brian Jenkins, you got to be thinking we've got 30 minutes to save our season. You Cabrera know. out of an ankle tackle, out of another tackle, and finally ridden down to the 34. 
Let's see our State Farm how to get to a better state situation right now for Bethune Cookman. Jay, how do they get back into this ball game? I mean, I think for both teams, they got to eliminate the penalties. I mean, it's going to come and bite somebody. And I think for Hampton, they got to protect Lugree. He's so valuable to them. He's getting hit a lot, making people miss. Find ways to keep those people off of him. And then if you're Bethune Cookman, eliminate the turnovers. Give credit to Hampton. I mean, Bethune's turned the ball over twice. Hampton has 10 points off turnovers. Conversely, Hampton's up by 10 points at halftime. Robinson, who is kept in check in the first half, took a big hit and actually had to leave the game for a few plays. Hands it off on first down for no gain. Bethune Cookman came into this ball game number one in offense, number one in defense, number one in turnover margin, but right now through two quarters, they're not leading this game in any of those categories. Yeah, and I think we talked about Daytona being a city for speed with NASCAR, and they've got 40 points per game average. Well, they got out of their lane. They mm -hmm. were in the front lane in the first quarter. Somewhere in the second quarter, they lost it. Robinson looking deep and incomplete. He was looking for Eddie Poole, his top target, but good coverage on the play by that Hampton secondary. This is how you play defensive back in the trail position. You're beat. Once he catches the ball, separate his hands. See, that's there. He kept that left arm on his body so that when Poole made the catch or tried to make the catch, he could just pull his left arm out and the ball will come out too. That's a great job by Courtney Bridget. Bridget, the transfer out of UNLV. You know why they say he has such an upside? He plays cornerback at six feet four inches. You don't find too many six foot four cornerbacks. Third down and 10. Bethune Cookman, four of eight on third. Five in the pattern for Robinson. Rifles it complete and a nice job hanging on by Maurice Francois. You know, Francois third in the MEAC in receptions. First time we've called his name tonight. Yeah, no, he's a guy that he's their possession receiver. He comes up with a big grab for third down conversions and he wears number seven. He started off his career as a quarterback here at Bethune. He realizes the importance of holding on to the football. Give him credit. He took a lick by Justin Blake. So into Hampton territory from the 43 yard line. A little end around. It's Francois. And Francois battling all the way. A nice pickup of about nine yards. Yeah, it's good to see a kid like Francois get an opportunity to be productive in the offense to make some plays. You come in here as the option quarterback, you get to play it. New coaching staff comes in, Jenkins comes in, goes away from the pure option attack they've been running for years. He's a good enough athlete to make the adjustment and play wide receiver. Francois out of Melbourne, Florida, just south on I-95. Second and short. The give is to Anthony Jordan. Both of these defense are very stingy when it comes to those second and third and less than a yard. No easy pickings. You really got to earn every yard you get down there running the ball in between the tackles. Wildcats get the first down. Rodney Scott in the game behind Robinson. Here he is. Nope. It's a quarterback keeper and a nice job selling it all the way by Robinson. Had me fooled and fooled the Hampton defense as well. You know, all the first half, we we're talking about how Copeland was coming unblocked. Well, he's unblocked right here, and this is why. He's not making the right decision. He comes in there free. He's actually on the outside the other way. I missed it, but we got a guy unblocked on the line of scrimmage. He's following the football. That's an easy pull for Robinson. Nice job by Bethune Cookman moving the football well on this opening drive. Again to the ground. It's Scott. And Scott finally kind of lost his footing inside the 10, slides in safely at about the seven. A lot of coaches will tell you the most important drive of a game like this is the first drive of the second half. And so far, it's been very good for Bethune Cookman, who needed something positive in this third quarter. 12 18 remaining. Hampton on top, 24 to 14. That's left in that conference. And of course, they'll have a new commissioner from this point forward. 
On first and goal, Bethune Cookman with the football. Very successful opening drive here in the second half. This is when they like to get the ball to Eddie Poole. They bring everybody in tight, try and get one on one coverage with their big play wide receiver. Nothing straight ahead on that carry. Maybe a yard for Jamar Robinson. There's Eddie Poole. Poole's a big playmaker. He's got great size, leaping ability. Normally they like to isolate him on one side of the field so he can try and get that one-on-one -on -one matchup. You see him now, he's coming down here on your bottom side there. They're gonna try and see if they can get a matchup. I wouldn't be surprised. On second and goal to the end zone. Touch, no, in and out of the hands. Oh, you've got to haul that in. Keith Stroud on a perfectly thrown football. Yeah, Kimbrough McGee's going to come over from that safety position and get over there and just, ah, he's just got to have that one. You know, this is on the other side there when you've got pool there. Good job by Pellerin of riding him to the outside. But wow, as you talked about, Keith Stroud, you got to come down with that ball. That ball was thrown right on the button. That should be a touchdown. Now third down and goal. Wildcats spread it out. And a whistle and a timeout. Timeout, Bethune-Cookman. That is their first charge timeout. So each team burning a timeout early here in the second half on this drive. 11.34 remaining in the third quarter. Hampton with 21 unanswered points, a very big drive from a momentum standpoint for Bethune-Cookman. Saturday morning, ESPNU previews a full day of college football at 9 a.m. Eastern. Join Aaron Andrews and David Pollock for College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Then at 10 a.m. Eastern time, catch a special college football version of Sports Nation. And at 11, it's The Whip, the show that gets the latest from all the game sites just prior to kickoff. College football live on ESPNU. Mike Morgan and Jay Walker with you from Daytona Beach. We talked about the Big 12. How about the Big East? Nate Syracuse making it perhaps the best basketball conference in the country. Well, no question. <laughs> no question, I think, the number one basketball conference. But I'm such a traditionalist. Let it be about football. Handle this stuff <laughs> during the offseason. We've got third and goal here, and you're talking about conference realignment. This is the 10th play of the drive. End zone, touchdown, Bethune Cookman. And there is the senior Eddie Poole from six yards out. And what a drive by the Wildcats. A late penalty flag. And is in the backfield of Bethune Cookman. And the Wildcats seem to believe it's on Hampton. And they're already sending out the extra point team. So Hampton making a big mistake with a personal foul. Bethune Cookman has had its share of 15 yarders. Heard on for the extra point. This would make it a three point game. 24 21. A very nice drive for the Wildcats. Three point game. Eddie Poole. Touchdown grab. The first gen ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy, and by Vizio, delivering entertainment, freedom for all. Great ball game here from Municipal Stadium, which was constructed back in 1988. Home of the Bethune Cookman Wildcats, who now only trail it by 3 24 21. Our score 11 28 remaining in the third quarter. No question, Jay Walker, that was a huge drive for a team that really had a rough time of it late in that first half. All the momentum was clearly on the side of Hampton. Yeah, I truly believe that great coaches earn their paychecks at halftime adjustments mm -hmm. coming out in the second half. And you can tell that Jenkins went there at halftime, got his offense together, 
and told the team, hey, it's all on the line. Let's get this done. We go down the field, march the ball right down, score. We're right back in it. Just like Hampton started to have momentum and get a chance to pull away, Bethune-Cookman's right back in it with the score. And if I'm not mistaken, that was a drive without a penalty on the Wildcats, that is. Wow, surprise, surprise, surprise. That? Yeah, so if they can, you know, eliminate that, this is a very good football team. They've got talent. They've got weapons. They just do a lot of self-inflicted pain to themselves with those penalties. To use a basketball term, Bethune-Cookman certainly has spurt ability. They can that score points in droves. A whistle on a kickoff. I didn't see a flag. Maybe he kicked it before he was allowed to kick it. Seen a little bit of everything so far tonight. <laughs> and we've seen a lot of this lady. That's our referee, Shannon Easton. She's been busy. And now we're being told it was the wrong spot by the officials on the kickoff. Remember, there was a personal foul, so the ball is now spotted where it's supposed to be at the 45. And no chance for a return for the Pirates. Well, ESPNU is the home for passionate college football fans as our experts break down the top schools in the nation in a weekly three-hour special. Don't miss any of the unfiltered conversation about hot topics in college football. The experts on ESPNU, Tuesdays at 1 and 7 o'clock Eastern time. Three-point ball game, and now, Jay, what does Hampton have? Are they able to respond? They just took their first punch in a while. Yeah, they have, and now... They, they had a lot of celebration on the sideline right before the half, and we've mm -hmm. noted out that they probably need to just calm down and relax. A lot of football left to be played. Now I think it's almost imperative that they get at least a first down. You know, you don't want to get three plays and out and have your defense right back on the field after they just surrendered points. Right down. Good job, baby. To the ground game on first and ten, it's Chisholm. He's been kept in check pretty well. Chisholm came in as the leading rusher in the MEAC. Bethune Cookman very stout on defense that front seven might be the best in the league. Yeah, they're very active You know Ryan Davis on the defensive line and then you got those great linebackers in Lewis and Sanderland Good job there my Washington To make something out of nothing gain of five. There was good pursuit on the play and he cut it back This is why for me, you know the number one stat in the NFL is third down efficiency You know as a passer how good is your quarterback? Show me his third down efficiency rating, and then I can show you whether or not you got a good quarterback or not. And they need to come up with a third down conversion right now. Hampton four of eight on third down tonight. Oh, look at that. A Barry Sanders-esque move by Jorian Washington. He just pulled the brakes on and then changed direction. Yeah, very few teams can run sideline to sideline and get away with it versus Bethune-Cookman. But here, this is just a sweep. Got a lead blocker on the outside. He did a great individual effort. A little spin move in the flat. First and 10 from the 32. They'll keep it on the ground to Chisholm, and he's stacked up, gain of about a yard. Now, this is kind of unique. You know, the MVP of the first half was clearly David Legree. Mm -hmm. Come out in the second half, they had third and short, pa obvious passing situation. They ran the ball. Get the ball again, first down. Running the football again. So it seems as if they're taking it out of their hot hand and going to some of the other players. Blitz here as Dixon gets it, and Dixon is tripped up for a loss. Great pursuit by number 11, Reggie Sandalands. Easily one of the top linebackers in this league. He's fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, how many times tonight have we seen him make that play? They try and out leverage him. You know, th this guy is a born football player. He's going to be a football coach when he's done playing. If you listen to the coaches, he's not going to give you that outside contain. You know, he's going to stay home, keep the leverage, and shoot the gap. And time and time again, he's made the big play. His dad was a standout wide receiver for Bethune-Cookman. This one's caught over the middle. Pickup of about eight yards. Isaiah Thomas, the senior out of Washington, D.C. And it'll be shy of a first down, and Hampton will have to punt it away. So give Bethune-Cookman's defense credit. 
You know, this is how you play zone. You know, he's got a good pocket here. They settle. Once the catch is made, hurry up to the tackler, make the tackle, and then uh, keep him from getting the first down. Harris calls for a fair catch and hauls it in at the 26. Bethune Cookman, a touchdown on their opening drive offensively and defensively, they force a punt. So, whatever. Coach Frazier said at the half, it's worked thus far. I beg your pardon, Coach Brian Jenkins said at the half, it has worked very well thus far. And where's the momentum? You know, it was all on the visitor sideline right before the half. It now come out, get the score. Defense does their thing. Now all of a sudden, the offense is ready to take the field, and the Wildcats are on the prowl. Rodney Scott behind Robinson. They fake it to him. Robinson rolls, fires, oh, wow. and incomplete. Another drop. And, and as we like to say in football, he was open from the get-go. You know, this is a boot play action. He's going around. You see him right there. Wide open. Did square those shoulders. Ball got away from him. Now second down and ten. Flair pass in the flat. Caught by a moment. And a penalty flag falls as he is shoved out of bounds. Cambrell McGee escorted him out. Keith Stroud, the receiver on the play, guilty of holding. One of the names that we've been talking about several times has been the play of Canberra McGee, number one for Hampton, doing a good job in mop-up duty. He's a backup cornerback, but because of the injury to James Butts we saw early in the game, he ended up going to that safety position, moving over to free safety, and he's been involved in a number of key plays, doing a good job in backup duty for the Pirates. Boy, they've had to replace some really good players from last year's defense, which was so good. Four-man rush oh, on second him. and long, incomplete. The ball was short, because you're right. Eddie Poole had a step on Pellerin, and if that ball is on target, it could be six. Well, that's that NFL matchup that we've been looking at. Look, he's got him beat. You know, that's beat right there. You get a guy, two-and-a-half-yard cushion, you got to put it out there, let him run, make that play, underthrown ball. Allows the defensive back to get back into the play after being burned. Incomplete. Eddie Poole would have taken that one 86 yards for a touchdown. What a huge play it would have been. They're going to try it again. Watch this. I'm pretty sure they're going to try it again. You got the one-on-one -on -one matchup down low again. No safety help. On third and 18. Robinson scrambling. Robinson can't get out of trouble. And Bethune Cookman will have to punt it away. It's a three yard gain, but far shy of the first down. The cornerback goes to bail technique. Look at Poole just eating up that cushion, but that's a better job of Pellerin by Pellerin not allowing Poole to get over the top. Well, you wonder if by the end of this game, we're going to be talking about that play where Eddie Poole had a step. Yep. You don't have it often on Pellerin. He did, and Robinson just missed him. As you see, a Hampton player down on the field that is Demarcus Bell big defensive tackle and it might be that time of the game we see some cramping going on remember this game was delayed over 40 minutes due to lightning it's hot it's sticky it's muggy out there typical Florida weather this time of year look at the size of those calves it's a big boy <laughs> a lot of cramping potential inside that body 6 3 3 20 Man, these calves weigh about 45 pounds apiece. <laughs> Kowalski on the punt. Brown Bro, what to are they doing? You got an injured player walking off the field. <laughs> wow. I've, I've seen it all. I, I'm I, I've telling seen you. It all. I've seen uh, it all. It's been an education tonight. <laughs> Oh, man. Now everybody's ready. 
It'll be a tough one to return. It'll bounce out of bounds. Good effort for Kowalski. Coming up, we'll tell you about Monday Night Football. Are you ready for some? We'll tell you about it more when we return. The Palmer and Pollock Show, Mondays at 1 and 9 on ESPNU. Hampton on top of Bethune Cookman, 24 21, with 7.41 remaining in the third quarter of play. Let's take a look at tonight's Bringing the Flavor brought to you by McDonald's. That was the marching Wildcats. They were on Monday Night Football two weeks ago. Tonight, they're on our field here in Daytona. Are you ready for some band? They are certainly bringing the flavor tonight. I mean, we had our own personalized band. You yeah. see that? I mean, first of all, you got to have a lot of size to be able to spell out ESPN. Right. Then to spell out ESPN U, U. with the capital U. That's right. They, they've got some bodies. Always entertaining. Always bringing a new little wrinkle. Good to see that. Chisholm in the backfield for Hampton. Good field position. Starting it at the 47 yard line. Legree keeps it. And Legree finally goes down on initial contact. Oh, look at that. They're covering the field. See, this, this is what I like right here. The U. You know, we go different places. You see the ESPN, they play the Sports Center theme, but they took the time to give us the ESPN U. And you break it down, but what, you, tuba is that the? What's the what's the big instrument you look for? Well, technically it's called a sousaphone, but oh man, but they're tubas, you know, common to call it tubas. Yeah, Bethune Cookman has 29 tuba players, and they've got four on standby, just in case. Just in case, four tuba players on standby. I guess they don't make the traveling squad. And, you know, I like the white hats. They put out the white hats, and you know, you watch them during the game. They're moving all over the place. They're always active. Chisholm guts it out for five, sets up a third and three. Legree shouts out the signals. Legree looking left, delivers and incomplete. Uh, he threw a laser at the 40. And unable to haul it in was McCain. You know, this is you got a stationary target. You got to hit him. You know he's standing up there. You're gonna throw a fastball that far away from somebody's body, and that's where the difference between being a thrower and being a passer. Right. If you're gonna be a thrower and everything's gonna be fast, you better be deadly accurate because it's pretty hard to catch a ball moving that fast, that hard, that's away from your body. And a fake, fake punt. And this is gonna be a first down and then some, and then he loses the football. And he lost it out of bounds. That's Lindell Gibson, who's had a heck of a game defensively tonight. And he gives the Pirates a first down nine yards on the fake punt. Yeah, I mean, good job. You see Gibson right here. A little shovel pass from the punter. He makes the first guy miss. And oh, <laughs> that's why he plays all defense and not offense. He's a starting middle linebacker. Oh. Tell you, he's fortunate that ball went out of bounds. Yes, very fortunate. You know, you know, you know, he's practiced that play once a week. They do that play in practice, I'm sure. And he tells everybody, if I get it, I'm going to take it to the house. <laughs> well, you got it and you bobbled it, son. Come on, man. Going to be tough to watch that one in the film room. But nevertheless, it does give Hampton the football back. Nothing doing there for Legree. Reggie Sandilands, who else? And now a late penalty flag. Sandilands was the FCS linebacker of the week with his performance against South Carolina State. He might be in contention for the for award play. again. Personal foul, number 56 of the offense. 15-yard penalty. Second down. Well, 
that's on their all conference center Vincent Harper. Penalties now Hampton with eight Bethune Cookman with 10. You know, I think you know that's probably going to be the adjustment they make you know it's getting chippy it's been chippy on the field all night you saw some wildcat defenders going there pulling their players off telling them let's not retaliate and that way instead of it being offsetting penalties it'll be penalty on them so good job by the wildcats and this one is caught shoestring catch by McCain but it only nets three yards and a penalty flag all the way in the backfield I think this is going to be a holding call. Holding. Offense. Number 53. Ten yard foul. Replay. Second down. Jamal Wilson. Yeah, Jamal Wilson, he's got his hands full taking on Ryan Davis, the senior defensive end from Bethune Cookman. And one thing we know that Ryan Davis does is he's got that motor. He doesn't mm -hmm. stop. He tries to just give you a speed rush on the outside. Let you catch him. You get a little bit winded out of position. All you can do is hold him. So this is that matchup right there. That's Ryan Davis right there. And you got him going against Wilson. Good angle there. Watch him get off the ball. Watch him just shoot with the speed he's got. This is now second down and 34. They need the 28. And a whistle will halt play here. I don't see a flag. We've seen a few of these just kind of miscellaneous whistles. I like that term. <laughs> miscellaneous <laughs> whistles. There you go. It's a new category. Well, we had a good flow and rhythm going there, I swear. Before the last foul. The previous play was a dead ball foul, making it second down. The last play was a holding foul that was administered 10 yards from the previous spot. We're replaying second down. Well, we had that right here. Our graphic had that the whole time. I think the uh, guys down on the field had the wrong down. Moving on, second and 34. Legree. Another penalty. I think this is going to be a hold. Ball's on the ground, but he was down. Reggie Sandilands racking up another tackle. I mean, it's getting to the point of getting very sloppy. You know, penalty every play. You know, penalty on every other play. Attitudes getting out there. Every play is almost a fight. You know, they got to settle down and play ball between the whistles the right way. Lots riding on this game. Holding. Offense. Number 61. Ten yard penalty. Replay. Second down. The right side of your screen. You know, we've seen him again. <laughs> <laughs> that's his move. You know, Corey Alapici, that's his move. He likes to, you know, he gives ground and then he just kind of takes you with him. And I think they've caught on to it. <laughs> He's got to come up with a new move. Earlier they called it tripping when it looked like wrestling. Now they finally got it right and said, hey, that, that's a hole and call there. Jay, I've done a lot of games over the years. It's been a while since I've said the following words. Second down and 44. I can save you some language. Why don't you call it second down forever? <laughs> they keep backing up. They're going to be snapping the ball from the ocean. <laughs> this play's blown up. Chisholm is gang tackled behind the line. Big Jameel Farrington, first one in on the hit. I mean, the only, only good thing you got to keep in mind, they had the ball on the Bethune Cookman 38 yard line for the first down. Now they're moving backwards. <laughs> the only thing you could say is at least your defense had an opportunity to rest on the sideline. They're not right back on the field. They need to get to the 28 yard line of Bethune Cookman. Well, the good thing about it, you know, we know Legree can throw it that far. Yes. <laughs> Third down and 44 yards to go. And they're just going to go to the ground. Conservative play call here, and that'll get them 
in better field position to punt but that was a drive Hampton would like to just soon forget. Meanwhile Bethune Cookman's defense they've really picked it up in this second half. Patrick Harris back to receive the punt. The lefty Stovall. And a diving catch at about the 26 yard line for the Wildcats. ESPNU's coverage of college football continues on Saturday at noon Eastern. Ryan Radcliffe leads Central Michigan against Kirk Cousins and the Michigan State Spartans then at 3.30. Colin Klein faces Ja'Cory Harris and the Miami Hurricanes college football on ESPNU Saturday. How about that hurricane team there? You know, I've seen it so often that tough times bring units together. Well, I mean, Ja'Cory Harris as a freshman was very good. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. He just kept throwing interceptions. Maybe he'll find the magic again as nowhere to run for Rodney Scott on first down. Picks up a couple. And again, things getting very chippy tonight. I don't think we've seen the last of the 15 yard penalties. Jackie Wilson is back in at quarterback. And I wonder now, is Jamar Robinson, who got his bell rung, is he still in the clouds for a little bit? Or are they just trying to get a change of pace here? Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, you really can't call because they just scored the first drive out of halftime. Right. They move the ball right down the field. But we know obviously when Wilson's in the game, it's a completely different offensive play selection that they call. They like to run the ball with the quarterback. And maybe they saw some things and it's paying off right now. Wilson streaking down the near sideline before he is finally tripped up by Justin Blake. Yeah, you know, Wilson does a good job of just playing his read option there. Looking for the lane, pulls the ball out. Great seal block there. Once he gets through the hole, he shows you that extra giddy up in his step. Get to the outside. Stiff arm there. 31 yard pickup. Bethune Cookman on the move. And Hampton struggling to get one of their players off the field. This is going to be a substitution penalty. Substitution on the defense. 12 players on the field. Five yard penalty. First down. I think Shannon Easton is just getting winded here tonight with the penalties. If you've got stock in uh, illegal participation, you've you've made some bucks tonight. We've had multiple penalties on that end. Personal fouls, false starts, holding. We've had a ball snapped with an injured player on the field. <laughs> I mean, am I missing something? 21 penalties thus far. First and five, good field position for the Wildcats. They trail it by three. To the ground and Scott. And a couple of tough yards there as he bangs ahead. It'll be second and short. And this is what we're seeing after every play, a lot of jawing back and forth. So this is the point. I think if you've got Wilson as your quarterback and the team is starting to come up and bite, you're not going to do a drop back traditional pass, maybe one of those double moves. You fake the bubble screen, get a receiver up to the second level. Quarterback keeper. And a nice job to lunge forward. I think he's got it with that extra effort. Delbert Tyler. Brings him down, but a nice job here by the quarterback. He did, but he paid the price. Good job of pulling the ball out, but he's going to get twisted around and wham. They come on over, put a pretty good hit on him. Delbert Tyler. You don't like your quarterback, even if he's a running quarterback. You don't want him getting hit that hard. Jackie Wilson, six feet, 215 pounds. A little bit smaller than Jamar Robinson. They tried the double move and go, but good defense by Hampton. Swarming defense. Three, four white jerseys in the area, including big number 98 to Marcus Bell. Yeah, the pressure got there. But watch the quarterback. They're going to go ahead and fake the wide receiver screen. So that's the pump, trying to get him up. He doesn't have time to get the recognition down the field because DeMarcus Bell was there at all. And then he just went ahead and laid off. <laughs> With one of those big old calf muscles that he had. <laughs> Second down. That was a loss of five on the play. Second and 14 now. They set up the screen. 
Well, if he cuts it up the middle, he's got some room. He does. Past the 20, keeps the legs churning. To the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Rodney Scott. What an effort. 34 yards. The former Ole Miss Rebel. Good job of spacing. Look everybody to the left, come back with the screen to the right. Then this is just all Rodney Scott. Bodies out front setting up blockers. He's weaving. Can't arm tackle him. Way to keep the legs churning. Extra point is hammered home, and it is a four-point lead. It's been a while since Bethune-Cookman has had the lead. Momentum shifting once again as the third quarter has belonged to the Wildcats. I mean, you, you see the effort here. He's going to do a good job. They're going to try and bring him down with the arm there, but look, good running backs keep their legs churning. Keeps them going once he sees it. Great job for him getting his first touchdown on the season. And Jackie Wilson, well, they always say when the backup comes in and scores, hmm. I should be the starter. Absolutely. Well, he did start a couple of games last year, including the playoff game against New Hampshire. And it's got to feel good for him to get back on the field, lead his team to a big drive. Well, we have had runs back and forth here tonight. It's kind of like a basketball game, this contest between Bethune, Cookman, and Hampton. That drives six plays, 73 yards. 2.48 off the clock. And you know, and you just knew sooner or later Rodney Scott was going to get in the end zone. And we talked about his average per carry, over six yards per carry, and then over nine yards per catch. It's just a matter of time, and he's one of the impact transfers, and you can see why. Dixon back to receive for Hampton. Now you got to be careful kicking the ball to Dixon. You know, we talked about it earlier. He came in second in the 100 meter dash in the NCAA. And they did a good job right near the sideline. Dixon probably should have let that go out of bounds. Would have had it at the 40. Instead, it's inside the 20 now. You know, when I talked to the wide receiver coach Lamar Thomas early, he was saying Dixon can run, but we got to work on the football skill set. He's a, he's a great track guy, unbelievable speed like he's never seen before. But we got to work on his football instinct. So now we'll see how Hampton responds. They had 21 unanswered. Had the lead at the half. Bethune Cookman comes back. A couple of touchdowns here in the third quarter. Legree. As time now he's in trouble and he's sacked. David Legree got a little bit too comfortable in that pocket and Ryan Davis slams him to the turf. Now this is one he should go to his check down right away. At the beginning of the game he was going to his check down. That would have been getting the ball to the wide receiver you saw on the right in space. Instead he holds on to the ball and takes a sack. So that's not how their offense worked. Their offense works read downfield one two not there check down right away. He didn't take the check down and he got sacked. Davis, a former basketball star in high school. Second down, an extremely long pass complete at the 25. And spinning out of a tackle is Isaiah Thomas before he is dragged down at the mm. 27. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter, a 21-yard gain. Bethune-Cookman has come storming back. Two touchdowns in the third quarter. The Wildcats have the lead. Lake Oswego battles Jesuit tomorrow at 10 on ESPNU. The Acura TSX comes with standard features like leather and Bluetooth. With the available technology package, it also has Acura Link real-time traffic and weather. Either way, you'll find an estimated 31 highway miles per gallon. And that might change your view on how luxury can live alongside efficiency. The Acura TSX. Find exceptional offers on a great selection at your Acura dealer today. Team is not something you do alone. Team is plural. Team is arms, legs, blood, sweat, and soul. 
lot goes into team. But what we take away stays with us. Entertaining ball game thus far here from Daytona Beach. It was all Bethune Cookman in the first quarter. 14 points on the board, including that touchdown run by Jamar Robinson. Then it was the David Legree show. Weaving his way through traffic, he had two rushing touchdowns. He threw another 50 yards, and Hampton had the momentum. And then in this third quarter, it was dominated by Bethune Cookman. A great tough run by Rodney Scott. And Bethune Cookman now enjoying the lead 28 24. Who's going to cross the finish line here in this fourth quarter? We've seen a number of momentum shifts throughout this ball game. And I don't know, Jay, I, mean, I can't tell what's going to happen the way this thing has gone thus far. If you go by our open, you know, we talked about Bethune had the ability to make adjustments. They were like NASCAR. They can stop and go. They can handle the tight turns where Hampton's got one speed, one speed only. They like to step on that gas pedal. Well, in the third quarter, their foot was off the accelerator, and they got passed up by the stock car. You brought up a good point. You know, we, we saw David Legree doing all that dancing, celebrating on the sideline. A little bit too early. A lot of football to be played. Legree he got flushed a guy out, deep. going long. Deep downfield, it's underthrown and still almost caught by Reginald Hicks. Dion Hanks was on the coverage, but he was beaten. You know, it's like Legree's got one of those arms. Like, I remember watching John Elway. And, you know, normally you tell your wide receivers, go to the sideline if the quarterback's scrambling. But watch him here. He's going to get him with the double move. He's got enough arm strength where Legree can get it out there. And if Legree was able, just by about three or four more yards, to get that ball there, Hicks would have had a huge touchdown. But it takes certain type of arm strength where you can have the trust to go upfield. And he throws one. High and outside on this one intended for McLeod. You know, there's a little phrase amongst quarterbacks. You know, they say, you know, if you're throwing air patterns in seven on seven, you know, you should be, you know, in the 85, 90% range. And, you know, that's one of those throws right there where it was like, you know, he had a nice pocket, simple swing pattern. You got to hit that throw 99% of the time. Hampton tonight on third down, five of 12. This is third and 10. Legree, rifles complete, and that'll be first down yardage. McCain, the senior out of Norfolk, Virginia, who came in leading this team with 15 receptions. And this is what he does well, you know, stepping up in the pocket, eyes downfield, locate a receiver, and get it to him quickly. So we talk about he'll miss some of the throws, but also that ability to step up and deliver the ball quickly, accurately, is something that he does well. That'll move the chains for the Pirates. Chisholm, well, he's really been bottled up tonight. Ordinarily, Antoine Chisholm will give defense his fits, but this is not your average defense. And this is just one of those matchup problems where Chisholm can really kick the ball in the middle, then bounce it to the outside, make something happen. But when you've got good outside linebackers like Sanderlands and Ryan Lewis, you know, there's not, there's not going to be any bouncing. There won't be too many opportunities to bounce. On second and eight, Legree. Dancing, Legree running, and Legree takes a sharp cut out of bounds after he picks up six. You know what, we talk about Chisholm. Watch number seven on the left side of the screen. He's not big, you know, 170 pounds, but he's got to block Ryan Lewis, and he's actually just going all after Lewis. So he throws his body all over the place, enabling his quarterback to get away and pick up the first down. Look at him. He's right there just getting in his way, just scrappy. Scrappy. We've been talking about Lewis all night. Chisholm only has 170 pounds behind him, but he got in the way just enough so Legree could get the first down. You got to be scrappy when you're going up against the preseason defensive player of the year. Third and two for the Pirates. Legree. Little option play. And it's a first down and then some. Still on his feet is Chisholm. Chisholm with great speed finally shoved out of bounds, but a nice job of tiptoeing through traffic. You don't see this too often. This option ran into the boundary. Option off the end man on the line of scrimmage, and that was Ryan Davis. And then you see Chisholm showing you some moves, a little inside, a little outside, a little wiggle, picking up the first down. Like that. See, first play shows you can block. Mm -hmm. Then you give him the ball in space, and, you know, that, that's how you draw it up. See, I'll tell you what he does well, then he goes out and he executes. It's like go. video game football. Sure. 
You gonna hit the uh, the X button here? You got it. You got it ready to go. I would. <laughs> I would right now. Plays very even in this game thus far. 55 for Hampton, 54 for Bethune Cookman. Lagree can't get out of trouble this time. Into the hands of Ryan Davis. When we talk about that matchup with Davis, running options off of him is not necessarily the smartest move you can make. Very athletic, quick, got great ability to move his feet in the shuffle. Now, on that last play, Bethune showed the blitz like they were going to bring pressure. Let's see if they come back to the pressure. 328 yards now for the Pirates on 55 plays. Legree has nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Couple of black jerseys coming in, including Harold Love the third, 6'3", 325 pounder out of Portland, Oregon. Yeah, he's a junior college transfer, and this is just a good one-on-one. -on -one. He got better leverage, was able to get underneath the shoulder pads and get to the quarterback. And if you can get sacks from your interior lineman, defensive coordinators love that. On third down, Hampton six out of 13, and this one is incomplete on third and 20. He was trying to hit Isaiah Thomas. And the Pirates will have to punt it away. So that Bethune Cookman defense, so good the last couple of years, showed some vulnerability in that second quarter, but they've made the adjustments. They have, and that's the mark of a good defense, and they're starting to wear down this Pirate offense. No return for Patrick Harris. It goes out of bounds. Bethune Cookman football when we return 28 24, our score. City card to pick up a few. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by AutoZone. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone, AutoZone. With Jay Walker, I'm Mike Morgan. 28-24, our score here from Daytona. It has been a back-and-forth contest. Well-played football game. Despite the penalties, each team has shown some big play potential here. Hey, hey he's getting kind of late. 11:30. It's a. Hey, it's not <laughs> a party until like she was ready to go to sleep. <laughs> not a party until the clock but, but, strikes midnight, right? Yeah, but you, but you got a good contest that's going on here too, and that's that's why everybody wants to stick around. So much is riding on this game. We talked about how. The winner of this game is really in a great position to get an opportunity to play in postseason, make the playoffs, and the loser is very difficult for them to get in. And I think Bethune Cookman realized that at halftime and seized the moment. Jackie Wilson stays in at quarterback for the Wildcats. And they'll try to gut it up the middle. Gain of about a yard as you see the MEAC standings. And again, a big win for South Carolina State already against Bethune Cookman so they've got a leg up as we mentioned earlier Hampton does not play South Carolina State so they really need a win if they're going to have a good chance of winning the MEAC and we already talked about it for Bethune Cookman I mean there's no two ways around it they, they really have to win this game if they're going to win the MEAC yeah they would have to win this one and, and also for Bethune you know a season ago they had one of their dream years going and then Florida A&M came and beat them in the Florida Classic and forced a three-way tie for the conference race so you don't want to have too much on the line going into the last week of the season against your arch rival not much there on second down and nine these two teams very competitive series Hampton leading it nine to seven but Bethune Cookman has won it the last three times that these two teams have met Got an injured player down. That might be some more of that cramping. I have a feeling we're going to see some more of that. That's Ian Davidson. You know, Ian Davidson, who's out of Washington, D.C., he actually played with Jamar Robinson at the University of Maryland. They were teammates. So I'm sure he had a few scouting reports for the Hampton defense. Yeah, what's good for good for one is good for the other. Same things that make you laugh can also make you cry. <laughs> so good to see both these young men coming down and excelling, getting an opportunity to play. You know, we really like about Jamar is the fact he's graduated. So getting it done in the classroom as well. 
This is third down and nine. They need the 19. Back to pass, cocking and firing deep down the sideline, incomplete, but a penalty flag and no question. Micah Pellerin at the last moment grabbed a hold of Eddie Poole's jersey who was flying. Eddie Poole can run. We know that. It's just a matter of giving it to him. And you got third and plus 10 yards. Give him a chance. Throw the ball to your best playmaker. He won that one on one matchup there. That's actually of all the penalties tonight. That might be the smartest one because better to get a hold than give up six. Yes. And I think something that has really happened here. Pass interference. Defense number 15. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Uh, at halftime, the battle of penalties, Bethune was kind of running away with it. You see right there, you get beat in that position. He's trying to slow him down. I mean, nicely thrown ball there. Poole might have caught up to that one. That would have been a big one. And so, you know, at halftime, the penalty battle. Bethune had nine penalties, six, four yards. Hampton had six. They started getting their act together in the second quarter. In the second half, now Hampton has 12 penalties. Bethune only has one penalty mm. in the second half. So they've eliminated those penalties. Mm -hmm. Thus, what we talked about, the team that has the fewest penalties at the crucial times has a good chance of winning the game, and that's why Bethune's now in the lead. They've cleaned it up. First and ten here, Scott in the backfield. They fake it to him. And Jeremy German on the tackle. Nowhere to run for Wilson. Might have squeezed out a yard or two. It's so interesting. And this is just really what makes Bethune Cookman so diverse. The ability to have Jamar Robinson in there and run a certain type of offense. And then they go to Jackie Wilson at quarterback and they run the offense that they ran all last year when they had Matt Johnson. How do you game plan for that? I mean, can you imagine what a week of preparation must be like? And Hampton had a hard time figuring it out. Now they're just now starting to make some adjustments. You just saw Robinson in the game, and this ball is caught off the deflection, dragging, rumbling, stumbling, and into the end zone is Jeremy German. What a play. Darielle Walker deflected it into the hands of German, and he drags a couple of Wildcats right to the end zone. You know, the cut block didn't get them down. And they're taught, hey, if they try and cut you, you got to leave your feet in German, showing the athleticism to make the catch. And then the rumble into the end zone. So the cut block doesn't work. It gets a great job by Daryl Walker of getting up in the air, tipping that ball, and then German doing the rest. Robinson might as well have bought a bus ticket. German took him about seven yards to the end zone. The extra point is up and through, and that becomes the biggest turnover of the night. Hampton back on top, 31-28. to 28. The Pirates grab the momentum right back. What a ball game here from Daytona. Hampton back on top, our third lead change, 31-28. What's at stake? Hey, it's early in the season, but there's a lot at stake for the Pirates. They're trying to stay unbeaten in the MEAC. Again, they don't play South Carolina State, so they've got to win every game they can in order to catch up to Buddy Pugh's Bulldogs. Bethune-Cookman, meanwhile, they've already lost to South Carolina State. They play FAMU on November the 19th, and as we talked about, as much as you can have a must-win this early in the season, that's what this is for the Wildcats. Yeah, they've got to win this game, and Hampton has already beaten Florida A&M, so their schedule... Technically, on paper, looks like it gets a lot easier if they can get this victory here tonight. From the 10-yard line, it's Courtney Keith. Oh, what a Keith, what a terrific open field tackle, an ankle tackle by the Hampton Pirates. That's Isaiah Thomas, who's had a good game at wide receiver. Nice play on special teams. They put some good athletes there and allow them to go out and make plays. So often in the college game, you see the starters not playing special teams, and we know how important special teams are. The wide receiver showing... Hey, I can play some defense too. Are, are you changing your check mark again? No, 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 no. You're no, gonna no, stay. No. Okay, I'm just just checking. No, 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 no. I'm staying out of that battle there. <laughs> staying out of that one there. It's been a work in progress. That whole uh, tail of the tape on special teams. Special teams could decide this one. Turnover certainly has thus far. Hampton scoring 17 points off of three turnovers. 
This is Scott. Big carry up the middle. First down yardage and then some. Give him 17. Yeah, he can really explode once he gets it. Watch the one step, then go. Get up there. Look at that lane to get through. Get to the secondary. You know, it's all because the trouble created by them bringing in Jackie Wilson at quarterback. Mm -hmm. You know, different type passes. They, the wide receiver screen package. And now the running game seems to be opening up from the inside out. Compared to early in the game, they could not run the ball in between the tackles. Again, they go straight ahead. This time about three, maybe two yards. Wendell Gibson on the stop. You know, Bethune-Cookman has three offensive linemen who are preseason all MEAC. You would think that they'd be able to kind of grind it down the throat of Hampton a little bit more. Yeah, you would think. But, you know, the one thing that Hampton does, they play really good defense, mm -hmm. and they make some adjustments as well. You know, their defensive coordinator, Keith Goganis, does a really good job and they don't give up a lot of a lot of points and linebacker plays the key you know we know about Lindell Gibson he's really good and you got Francois we've called his name several times before so I think they've kind of balanced each other out well while we have a moment here with the injured Hampton player a big Saturday coming up on ESPNU how about a quadruple header just keep it locked from noon all the way into the late hours of the night. Central Michigan at Michigan State. Kansas State taking on Miami. Louisiana Tech takes a trip to Starkville. And Howard taking on Morgan State at what is now MetLife Stadium, the old Meadowlands. That was Jeremy German, the injured player, as he's walked off the field. The new Meadowlands, I should say. The old Meadowlands no longer a home for anybody. Second and eight. Ooh, nice moving. Uh, good job by Wendell Gibson to trip up the quarterback, Jackie Wilson. Do you, do you go back with Jamar Robinson at some point, or are we going to see Jackie Wilson the rest of the way? I'm, I'm thinking you'll probably see him the rest of the way unless they're down in a two-minute situation. They need to throw the ball a little bit more. You know, when, when Wilson just dropped back the pass, to me, it was like no doubt he planned on running that ball the whole time. So they're able to spread them out and just create the running lanes. And I think you don't see Robinson unless you're down in an obvious passing situation. Third down and two. Wilson hands it off. And trying to push the pile forward is Scott. I don't think. Well, you know what? I'm not even going to guess. It's too close to call. A great job. It's actually Anthony Jordan on the carry. And he was met by a couple of white jerseys. It was just a, a tug of war from that point, and it is short, fourth down at inches. Ooh. This is going to be a very crucial play. Both of these defenses do a good job of fourth and short opportunities. Bethune-Cookman one of one on fourth down already tonight. They're going to do the option. Watch the option to the left side. Wilson finally gets it. They go to the right, and it's stopped. Hampton stuffs the play. Looked like some confusion. Wilson was begging for the football, and he didn't get it when he wanted it. Jordan on the carry. Francois, number 31, on the stop. Both teams do great jobs on short yardage run situations. That stop right there is going to make it very difficult. Don Rose has to be very proud of that defensive unit. Making that play there. Giving the offense the opportunity to get the ball back with great field position. Yeah. I mean, he was very fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage. Great tackle by Gerald Francois. They're chasing this thing down. He comes unblocked, meets the running back behind the line of scrimmage, and then here come the rest of the Pirates. Did you notice on that replay, Wilson almost bumped into the running back, Jordan? That just that play never looked right. Yeah. The, the timing wasn't there, the rhythm wasn't there. They yeah. baited them to run to the under front. Head coach Donovan Rose fired up. Hampton back with the football and Chisholm. Great second and third effort. He just keeps those big legs churning and picks up eight, eight tough yards. You know, when you got a good running back with balance, you say size doesn't matter. But if you've got a little running back, 
And every now and then you want that little running back to run low to the ground and run little. Make yourself small, hard to hit, not a lot of target. Keeping his balance. On second and two, back to Chisholm. And he's popped and dropped near the line of scrimmage. No gain. And that's one where you got to say you become a one-cut running back. You know, if it's second one to two yards, you don't have time for dancing in the hole. Take the handoff, make one move, and get through the line of scrimmage. Now, this is going to be interesting, too. Hampton's really struggled in these type of situations mm -hmm. as well. We talked about both defenses are very stingy in short yardage run situations. They're not a particularly big offensive line. They're 7 of 15 on third down. This is third in the yard. Got a little bubble right there. If they can get somebody into that B gap. Well, Gray hands it off. They try to hit that gap, but good pursuit. McLeod tripped up by Ryan Lewis. Yeah, we, we knew that was a B gap, and, you know, they've got linebackers that are waiting there, so what, what you probably need to do is get that running back to come here and be a lead blocker. He goes, he actually gets the football. See, he should have been the lead blocker, and you could have had a collision in the hole. Then there would have been some breathing room. But a guy like Ryan Lewis coming unblocked, oh, you can cancel Christmas. That tackle's done. Well, Hampton thought about it. It's too far away for a field goal. It's close enough, and it's short enough where you might gamble. But up by three, they're just going to play field position right here. And it bounces into the end zone. Uh, Bethune Cookman will have it at the 20 when we return with 452 remaining. It's a three point game here from Daytona. The Palmer and Pollock Show, Mondays at 1 and 9 on ESPNU. Great football game tonight from Daytona. A big MEAC tilt. Hampton leading Bethune Cookman 31 to 28 with 4.52 remaining. And it's been the Hampton defense coming up with some big plays of late. Yeah, you got Darrell Walker getting the tip ball, the assist, going to Jeremy German, running it into the end zone to give the Pirates a lead. Then they came up with a big fourth down stop. Great job by their outside linebacker, Francois, making the tackle, keeping the Wildcat running back just a hair short to preserve the lead. And obviously a very critical drive for Bethune Cookman. You don't know how many more opportunities you'll have. Nice job setting up the screen pass to McLeod. McLeod still on his feet. And I beg your pardon, that's actually Rodney Scott with a nice play, 17 yards. So a good positive play to start the drive. Yeah, I mean, time and time again, they've been able to run this misdirection screen where the quarterback looks off to the left and comes back to the right. And Hampton just has nobody that's over there. They're flowing so hard to the left side that nobody's on the right. And Gerald Francois is on an island out there with two linemen coming to block him. Jackie Wilson staying in at quarterback. On play action. Flares it out. Deflected and knocked away through the hands of Jonathan Moment. And that, that's something where Jackie Wilson, he's got to find a throw in lane. That's the second time tonight night we've seen him try to throw through somebody. Mm -hmm. Defender's not going to move when they see you throwing the ball their way. They're going to jump, try and bat it down. He's got to find the window in which he can deliver a ball. He's not a tall quarterback, just six feet. And he's had a couple knocked down already tonight. This is second and ten. Five wide formation. Over the middle, complete. Pass midfield, and a nice tackle before Patrick Harris takes it to the 43-yard line, a 20-yard gain. The, you're not, you know, you're going to see Harris right here do a double move. Sit in the middle, linebacker Gibson thinks he's settling. He takes off with that second burst, picks up the first down. Whenever Bethune-Cookman has needed a big drive tonight, they've been able to come up with it. We've had three lead changes in this game. They're hoping for a fourth. On first down, it's Scott. Scott, big hole right side. Scott still on his feet inside the 20 and down to the 16-yard line. Justin Blake, the last line of defense for Hampton. You know, we've seen Scott several times just find a crease and go through it. 
Good blocking up front by the offensive line. You got big number 70, Latiel Curry and Corey Mason, the right guard. One on one blocking scheme and Rodney Scott just finding daylight. 27 yards. A lot of people believe Curry could be headed to the NFL. Oh, no. Some trouble here, and Wilson just has to eat it. Falls forward for three. Francois brings him down. Oh, wow. I mean, they had an opportunity for a great play there. Center actually snapped the ball too soon before the running back got close. Wilson just held the ball out there, and they didn't tackle him. He turned a play that should have lost three or four yards in the positive yardage by picking up four yards. Now Bethune Cookman running this drive like there's a fire drill going on. They are racing to the line. Now on second and six. Play action. Rolling left. And incomplete and intercepted. No. Eddie Poole. Eddie Poole? Eddie Poole caught it? Unbelievable. How in the world did he grab this one? Wow, you got Poole there. Going there, and he's going to readjust. See the quarterback scramble. Defensive back's going to undercut it. I thought this ball. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> right through the hands of Cambrill McGee. That looked like a magic trick. Eddie Poole, the senior, one of the leaders of this team, comes up big. And a timeout called by Bethune Cookman. We've got to get another look at that last pass. You got to be thinking if, if Campbell McGee doesn't lose his footing and just runs through the ball, does he come away with this interception? I mean, he's a secondary route. McGee's got him in the zone to push off. Gets it. McGee's underneath there. Seems like he has it. Oh. Wow. He came and just snatched it out of the clinch by McGee. Think of the concentration here by Poole. He's got to be thinking that McGee, at the very least, is going to deflect this ball. He just whiffs on it. Yeah, watch, watch him extend his arm. Don't let it come to his body. He goes out and extends. <laughs> oh. And by doing that little extension at the end, was able to pull the ball away from McGee. Unbelievable play by Eddie Poole. Second touchdown tonight. Big extra point here. And it'll be put on hold. Now you wonder if they're going to look at the touchdown. Did, did, did he step on that back line? Yeah, Hampton is challenging the play, and on a play as critical as it is, you can't blame Coach Rose for at least trying here. Now, I thought he was close to the yellow line on the back of the end zone. We're not going to see that there. But I think it was a step before that, right when he came back to get it. Well, the other thing to look at, too, he can't go out of bounds and then back in, but he never yeah. did. No, that's a touchdown. Field, but the ball was caught. Oh. Now, I think the two things you look for, number one, obviously, was he in bounds. He never went out of bounds beyond the end line. I think that left foot is down before the right foot. The right foot is close, but it looks like that left foot is down first. There we. Oh, yeah. And when they backed it up right there, that was a perfect shot. So, I, mean, I, think, I think we know it was clearly a catch. Yes. Now, I don't think this one's coming back. I don't blame Hampton for trying. But it's just a sensational play by Eddie Poole. Again, if, if you haven't played wide receiver, maybe that play looks a little bit easier. 
than you think it is. But your vision, he's watching Cambro McGee's hands. It's hard to judge this football when it goes right through his hands. Right through him right there. <laughs> See that right foot right there. So that was the one I thought might have been on the yellow line, but it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it got on the white part of the line. It's on the yellow. Yeah. And the yellow is fair. So it's the white portion of the end zone that would be considered in the back of the end zone. Right. So he's in place. See with the pylons mark right there. Mm -hmm. They put it right behind the yellow line. So yeah. I would be very shocked if this touchdown came off the board. Yeah, I would too. I think it's going to hold up. And then assuming Bethune Cookman hits the extra point, if you're Hampton, you'll have 250 to work with, and you got to get a touchdown. The rolling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Bethune Cookman. Hampton University will be charged their second timeout. You know what's interesting about this game, Jay, is that we've had some ugliness, okay? We've had some penalties, we've had some turnovers, but amidst the ugliness, we've had some really pretty plays. And that was a great throw by Jackie Wilson. We're giving credit to Eddie Poole for mm -hmm. making the catch, but Jackie Wilson was getting hit. Right. You know, he just got rid of the ball. Don't take a sack. Let somebody make a play. Could have been an interception, but, you know, like to always say at the quarterback position, you can't be afraid of an interception if you're going to try and throw a touchdown. Right. Well, it was a fearless throw, and he threaded the needle. Cambro McGee is going to have nightmares about that play and wonder how in the world did I not get my hands on that football? Heard on for the extra point, and he'll tack it on. 35-31, our fourth lead change of the night. What's at stake tonight? The Hampton Pirates, again, trying to stay unbeaten in the MEAC. Don't play at South Carolina State, but this is a great opportunity to keep pace for the Bulldogs. Bethune-Cookman, they've already lost to South Carolina State. Kind of puts them in a must-win situation if they're going to defend their MEAC crowd. Yeah, they've got to get it done. And for Bethune Cookman, you know, a lot of eyes have been on them. You keep in mind the fact that they lost to Florida AM last season at the end of the year. Then they lost the playoff game, first round of the playoffs. This year they beat Prairie View, but then they lost to South Carolina State. So you know, the Hampton coaches were saying this is a team that's lost three out of four football games. Mm -hmm. First time that Brian Jenkins has really faced that type of adversity for his Wildcat program. He wanted to see how his team would respond. Didn't look so good in the first half, but in the second half, they've come out here and played, I guess you would call it Wildcat football. Brian Jenkins in his second year as the head coach of Bethune Cookman. He came from Rutgers, where he was the wide receivers coach under Coach Shiano, and he still raves about Shiano. He still says that Greg Shiano was a major influence on his career. He's had a lot of guys who have had some influence on him. Going back to his uh, coaching days all the way back to Dillard High School with the legendary Otis Gray. He was actually teammates with Isaac Bruce and Frank Sanders. You think that was a pretty good team? Wow, really good team because you know, Coach Jenkins was a good football player in his own right mm -hmm. in Cincinnati. He played college ball at Cincinnati, held some records there when he left campus. Big drive up coming for Hampton. Dixon bobbles it, picks it up. Trying to find some room. Can't do it. Stacked up at the 17 yard line. Well, coverage of high school football continues on ESPNU tomorrow night as Lake Oswego out of New York. The Lakers taking on intrastate rival Jesuit Crusader. See the future stars of football today. Geico ESPN High School Football Showcase on ESPNU tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Well, we've had just about everything else in this football game. Are we going to see a buzzer beater? One final touchdown near the end of the contest. And if you're David Legree, you have to live for this moment. Mm. You've got to live for the moment right now. You've got two minutes, 50 seconds on the clock. You've got a timeout. You need a touchdown. Th this is where stars are born. David Legree, the senior, looking, and it's dropped. Boy, they've had a few drops tonight. That one was right in the hands of McCain. It was a little low, but certainly catchable. Uh, Dyree McCain was the lead receiver for the Pirates coming in tonight's contest. He's been kind of quiet. And coming in, he had 15 catches to lead this Pirate offense receiving core. He needed to have that catch right there. Plenty of time on the clock. Hampton, incidentally, one timeout left. Legree 
over the middle. Modest gain of three as Hicks hauls it in. That sets up a third down and seven. Look at this real tight bunch formation. Agree high on the throw. Looked like he was going for Hicks again. Well, you know, take a look at the pocket. You know, that's a good pocket there. You know, that, that's where you got to hit. Ryan Davis with the pressure. Fourth down and seven. The Pirates are one of one on fourth down tonight. Now, because he takes a deep drop, if he's going to step up and think about running, he's got to make sure that the running lane is wide open. This might be the ball game right here. Legree steps up. Legree going to tuck it and run, and he's got the first down. What a big-time play by David Legree. You know, he had to run 17 yards in order to get that. You see where he's lined up. He takes a five-step drop, so he's got to get seven yards, eight yards, just to get to the line of scrimmage and then go another 10 yards. The Wildcats were there. Just some poor tackling. I actually thought it was a pretty poor decision to run the football, but the individual athleticism of Legree overcame that. Clock ticking down, under two minutes to play. Again, the Pirates have one timeout. Legree upended after a gain of five, maybe six. They'll race to the line of scrimmage to get off another play. Oh, I like that. I mean, this is the busted play. You know, Chisholm's supposed to get the ball, wrap around, handoff. They didn't do it. He says, you just go. You just run forward. I know where the hole's supposed to be. He's putting it all on his shoulders. Second and a short five. And this could be good. Out in the flat, a nice juke by Chisholm, and he burrows his way to the 44. That's a first down. You know I knew it would be good? Because you actually had Chisholm, who can make people miss, in Sandlands, in the open field. Yes. And, you know, we know Sandlands is a great football player. Very tough to bring down Chisholm in an open field tackle situation like that. Good one-on-one -on -one matchup on that play. Move the chains. Hampton will agree. Surveys. Fires deep. He's got a man. Complete at the 23 and out of bounds. That's Javaris Brown, the sophomore out of Macon, Georgia. 35 yards. One thing Legree can do well is get the ball downfield with the flick of a wrist. And you see Brown comes all the way across the formation. D.J. Howard, the free safety for Bethune-Cookman, was out of position, focusing on the three-receiver side. One of those wide receivers slipped to the other side. And big play for the Pirates. Under a minute to go. Well, he's got a guy. He's got a guy in the back of the end zone. Buys time. Oh. Fires incomplete. He was looking for Isaiah Thomas. Watch Javaris Brown wide open in the corner of the end zone. I don't know how he got there, <laughs> but he got there. Take a look at this. They're going to miss him. Uh. He's sitting there. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Oh, he <laughs> had it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, goodness. We'll agree. Would love to have that one back. Second down and 10. Clock stops at 50. Legree has all kinds of time. Fires. Complete. Leaping catch by Javaris Brown. Clock ticking down under 40 seconds. A gain of 10. Now they need to have a little bit more pep in their step here. Yeah. Now that, that clock, you don't want somebody to get tackled in the middle of the field if you have to burn a timeout. Oh, wow. And now they call it, that is what you call poor time management. Yeah. See, they didn't get the first down, so they were a yard short. And that's where you want to say, just get up there, get behind right. the center, quarterback, sneak it, run it, get the first down, then get up and kill right. the clock. Because in the college football game, once you get the first down, the clock stops as they reset the chain. See, so look when he catches this ball with 40, 43 seconds, something like that. Now you want to get your offense up there. They're letting it just continue to tick, and then they don't get the first down. Uh, what this does now, it completely changes your playbook because you have no timeouts left. You have 21 seconds. You do something on the ground or over the middle, it's going to be tough to get another playoff. Yeah, and, and what do you do? I mean, can you risk running the ball and not getting the first down? If I don't think so. And you don't get it, game's over. Right, right. You know, because you can't get up there and clock it. Yep. So 
You know, yeah, that, that's tough. And I think right now, by them calling that timeout, they're making the decision. We're going to take two shots at the end zone, throwing the football. I know one thing that, that I can't help fall in love with if I'm calling plays for Hampton, that's Legree on a rollout. Yeah, you know, don't make him stay in the pocket. Let him get creative if you're Hampton. And the same thing if you're Bethune Cookman, you tell Ryan Davis and those guys, do not lose your outside contain. Hampton tonight, 7 of 17. They're reviewing the spot of the a football. Play is under further review. The, what, I, what I saw where the ball was placed, it was less than a yard away from the marker. But they had third and two on the scoreboard. So there's a difference of opinion here. Well, the first down marker is about on the, we call it 12 and a half yard line. Ooh. He might have got that. He might he he comes down, he comes down on the, the 12 on about the 11 to 12 yard line and the, the chains are on the other side where the marker is. And from here that looks like the marker is on the 12 yard line. If he's you know 11 and a half yard you know in there that would be a first down. What's interesting about that is even if somehow where it hits. Yeah look, look right where he hits. That's got that's got to be a first down. It seems like you would mark him at the 12. You, you would mark him at the 12. At the very least. And right now they've got him marked at around the 14 yard line, 13 and a half. I mean, that, that can't be any worse than the 12. Yeah. And if you look at the first down marker on the opposite side of the field, that's between the 12 and the 13. Yeah. So going on that spot, that's got to be a first down. And, and this is the 12. You know, that's a 12 yard marker right there. Good review. You know, that's what you want to review for Absolutely. just to get it right. Absolutely. They can correct and get it right. We can deal with the time delays and things of that nature. Get it right. Well, that man, Donovan Rose, knows what's at stake on this spot. What a great job he has done in his third year with the program, trying to get Hampton back to the glory years. They won the MEAC title in 01, 04, 05, and 06. And he's got a heck of a team this year. This would be a huge win if they can somehow pull it out in these final 22 seconds. And with the review, they called a timeout. You know, is it was it a challenge type of review? Do they get the timeout back? Well, Hampton had. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. I, I would think that that's something you'd want to review anyway without having to cost the team a timeout. You know, you see the clock on this play. And he comes down with 43 seconds left. Well, have they come away with a verdict? I think, no, they're still talking about it. Hampton's already at the line of scrimmage just in case. This is going to be a very tough call, and, and you've got to consider a couple things. If they got it, well, then what do you do with the clock? Because if it was a first down, then the clock should have stopped shortly thereafter the catch. It's a very critical spot. You see Shannon East and the referee talking it over with the replay crew, which is actually to our left here in the press box. Obviously, that's good news. Now, is there any more news on the clock? Well, that would be the key, because if you get the first down, you've got to stop the clock and move the chains. And the timeout, see, they need they need to request some of that time back. There was 42 seconds left when he caught that ball. Oh, wow. And they still still showing no timeouts on the board. Meanwhile, Legree in trouble and is Somehow gets out of it, throws to the end zone incomplete. I don't know how he avoided the sack. That was a Houdini act by number eight. You know, that, that's the thing down here. 
mentally you're taught get rid of the football. He didn't get rid of the football, but was athletic enough to find a way to get rid of the football. Keep in mind, too, the MIAC only implements instant replay during televised games, so you don't always see this in a game like this. A lot of different things at play sometimes. Not everybody's used to the certain factors that go into that. Meanwhile, big play right here. Second down and 10. Clock at 12 and ticking. Legree throws left and it's dropped. And you know what? That's actually a good thing because Javaris Brown was about to be tackled in the open field. That would have been the final play of the game. Yeah, it did him a favor. It did him a favor. And as a quarterback now, you've got to see ahead of your wide receivers. If you're going to throw the ball and they're not in the end zone, you got to see who's behind them because they can't. They've got to focus. Well, you've got one chance and one chance only now. The clock at eight seconds. You either throw it in the end zone, or if you're Legree and you take off, you better make sure you get to the end well, zone. You won't get there. I mean, the defensive backfield only has so much, so far to drop back right. in coverage. And this is where you need one of those tall receivers, and you maybe try and get him a quick, you know, back shoulder type throw. It doesn't take a lot of time on the clock. This is your ball game. End zone. No, they'll get one more. Incomplete. They'll have one more play. The clock is at yep. four seconds. Four seconds left. It was intended for Hicks. It sets up a fourth down. Hampton is actually two of two on fourth down. So it all comes down to this. 35-31. Bethune-Cookman on top. Hampton has lost three in a row to the Wildcats. David Legree works out of the shotgun. Here comes the blitz. Legree, middle, Got him. touchdown! Oh, wow. Did he lose it? Yes, touchdown. They wow. say he held on long enough. Isaiah Thomas makes the catch with no time left. What a play, and Hampton has won the ball game. What an aggressive play call to leave the middle of the field wide open. Blitz, your all-conference linebackers. Go with the hot read. This is going to be challenged. Oh, easy throw. He's got it. He's got it. It was kicked out actually coming across. He's just replacing the middle of the field open. Oh. Isaiah Thomas, a senior out of Washington, D.C. And on a night which we have truly seen everything in this football game, what a way to end it. They brought the pressure, and he gets replaced where the linebackers came from. You know, you're taught blitz and linebackers replace and get the run. See, they're coming. They're shooting the gaps right here. So you've got the middle of the field wide open. All he's going to do is get here and replace where they came from. That's how you do hot reads. Fundamentally sound, but it's such an aggressive play call to bring the middle linebackers and not drop them in coverage and force everything in front of you. Oh, wow. Good job by David Legree. Stand tall in the pocket. Know you're going to get hit. You don't mind getting hit if there's a touchdown. And Whoa. Now, from that angle, it looked like he turned and the ball might have been bobbled. I thought it was kicked. On the initial replay, I thought he had it all the way. I did, too, but that one looked fishy. That was a little more interesting. We'll have to take another look at that. I'll tell you one thing, if Hampton holds on to win it, they can think instant replay in large part. Think about if they don't get the spot. You know, this one look step. here looks like he's got it, clearly. And it looks like the foot kicks it out, but, the, but when you go back and see the other one, you see the leg doesn't even hit the ball. What hits the ball I to force it, it to come out? I think see, he's... Ah, oh, it looked like the knee a little bit, but mm. now he's got See, it here. This is the look. See, this is a look. Step down. That's a touchdown. He doesn't have to come down oh, with it. that ball comes out before he turns over. See, I think he catches it, it again See, it, because it's in the end zone. Once he gets that foot down, that's a touchdown. Yes. He's, he's controlling it at that point. Yes, I don't think there's any way in the world they reverse this. 
Isaiah Thomas did his best to make it interesting. But I think this is going <laughs> to hold up. Everybody, I mean, every fan in this stadium hasn't moved. What made the ball come loose? I mean, that's what I'm wondering. We, I thought it was a leg or a knee. But when you saw the other angle, it wasn't a knee. I didn't see a foot hit the ball. So it becomes he's on his back. Does he have secure possession of it? It looked like the defender was beyond him, was further up the field. I might be oversimplifying this, but I just think because it's an end zone play, he's got control when that foot goes down in the end zone. I think that's a touchdown. I think that holds up. Um, two of the three looks look like touchdown all the way. Mm -hmm. But when you see this one here at the end of the look, see, he's going down. It looks like he's got it. Now watch the defender go by. See, the defender's about, see, before the defender gets to him, looked like that ball was yeah. moving. There was something there. After further review, the receiver did not maintain. Oh! Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, two out of three angles. Uh, touchdown. Saw touchdown. Right. But that last angle I saw, what made that ball come loose? And it was not a defender. You know, th this is the angle I think that determined it. You know, as they're coming here, watch it slow this thing down real slow. Right. As he turns, that ball's loose before it's hit, before the black defender got over there. I don't know if you could have a more painful way of losing than Hampton just did. 35-31. Your final score will step aside with the Lexus HBCU postgame report. We'll be back from Daytona in just a moment. When you join together talented student athletes, an unbelievable finish here from Daytona Beach as it is now time for tonight's Lexus HBCU postgame report 35 31 your final score Bethune Cookman holds on to win this football game and Jay Walker just when you think you've seen it all we thought we saw an unbelievable closing touchdown reception to win this game by Isaiah Thomas replay would be involved we had a lot of controversy in this game but none more so controversial than that last play yeah, you know there's a phrase within the NFL the eye in the sky doesn't lie <laughs> well the eye in the sky lied on this one because two out of three angles looked like it was a touchdown and turned out not to be but I mean it all started right here but Thune Cookman gets the lead when you thought that the Hampton defensive back would have had the interception Poole made the catch and then this one right here that close Looks like he's got it. He's got it. He turns his shoulder. Ball's moving before he can show he had possession of it. Taking the what would have been the game-winning touchdown off the board. And what a heartbreaking loss for the Hampton Pirates. We mentioned a couple of times during the broadcast that this game did have instant replay. And boy, did instant replay play a huge role in those final few plays. Yeah, and as much as we complain about the delays, you know, we, we both agree. It's all about getting it right. And if they're going to use instant replay to get calls right, then I'm all for it. Congratulations to Bethune Cookman. Where do you start on this one? I mean, great individual performances all around. We could easily be talking about David Legree being the hero on another great drive. But in the end, Eddie Poole, the senior wideout for Bethune Cookman, he was terrific. Yeah, I mean, he stepped up and got the two touchdown grabs and the wherewithal to take the ball away from the defensive back rather than watching the ball come into his body. He did a great job there. And then the backup quarterback, Jackie Wilson, came in there, gave him a spark. And they could never figure out what Jackie Wilson was doing while he was a quarterback. Good coaching change by Brian Jenkins. This has been our HBCU postgame report brought to you by Alexis. A thriller here from Daytona Beach. Bethune Cookman wins it 35 31 over the Hampton Pirates. Once again, it's been our pleasure bringing you action here from Municipal Stadium. Coming up next, we'll send you back to the studio for Sports Center U. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For our ESPN production team and Jay Walker, I'm Mike Morgan saying good night from Daytona Beach, Florida. Now let's get you to Sports Center U. Rich, take it away. This is Sports Center U. 
Rich Hollenberg, Jason Seahorn, Charles Arbuckle in the ESPNU studios. Tonight on ESPN, Thursday Night Football, Cincinnati Bearcats welcoming NC.